Long ago, the gods held their chains over everything they surveyed. Even emissaries from realms beyond were used as mere serving girls and handmaidens before their boundless hunger for order. But one among them turned their hunger against them. Falling upon the children of the sun and swearing eternal enmity against the gods, Zephyra, the cannibal god, began her great and terrible campaign to restore the world to its natural state, so that the world belonged to the strong, as is primal right. Yet the gods, in their cruelty, locked her away from our world. She visits only in spirit, only in dreams, for her true body remains in a far-off demo plane. But we, her devoted, her loyal flock, can give her entrance into our world, so that she may do her blessed work. All we need is devotion and a body. She nearly graced our world with her presence. The drow had completed their ritual, prepared the entryway for her. But beneath layers and layers of conspiracy, they were found out. They were interrupted. And our lady sent back to sleep. Those who are responsible are still out there, and doubtless they will come again. Volthil, the lizard folk cleric. Volthil! Leaf, the halfling bard. You know, I've been writing up another song. I think it's pretty good. Kaleil, the wood elf rogue. Just follow me, okay? Nobody's getting left behind. And Minerva, the human warlock. If it means our destruction, we'll do whatever you ask of me. We will fight them. We will show them the folly of resistance. And this time, there will be no foolish interruptions. This time, the world will bend to the mighty strength of Zephyra. This time, a cannibal god rises! <laughs> Hello and welcome to the return of the Cannibal Conspiracy 2. This has been a long time coming. I Thank you, thank you, Scott. Thank you, Scott, for showing how excited we all were. I am your Dungeon Master, Alex, here to go back into the world of spooky, scary cannibal cults and their really hot god. Uh, and joining me today, we have Scott. We have Don. Hi. And we have Uprising. Hello. Queen will unfortunately not be making the first session. She is currently at Comic-Con. But for the rest of us, it's October. It's the spooky season. And we missed our Halloween stream date. So this is what we do instead. Uh, so... For those of you who have not seen The Last Cannibal Conspiracy, here's a summary. Cannibal God. She sucks. Throw soap down her throat, it's fine. <laughs> now, before, now before we get into the actual campaign, quick couple of notes. Uh, on the upper left is something that I finally figured out how to do. There is a scrolling text thing that shows what music track is playing so that the chat's not like, oh, what is this? They can wait five seconds for the thing to scroll through and say, oh, it's this particular track. So that's going to be fun. And also you might notice up top that my usual draw from the deck of many things is now the deck of many horrors. There are different cards in there with different effects, and it's definitely not just the Taraka deck from The Curse of Strahd. Definitely not that. Should I be concerned? Should we all be concerned? You should absolutely be concerned, Scott. Oh. I mean, it sounds like it's named more appropriately. Yep. <coughs> that being said, let us go into the campaign. Welcome back, travelers. I see you've come by for another story. Well, you are in luck, for... 
one of my last stories. The one against the heroes who fought against the cannibal god. It doesn't end there. Let me... There. There we go. There's the track. <laughs> you see... After our heroes had ventured into the Temple of the Drow, wiped up the opposition there, and, at great cost, defeated Zura, or Zephira, the cannibal god, turns out there was a whole thing about how that's what she's called an undercommon. People people know who we're talking about. It's the cannibal god. It's, it's fine. After that happened, there were only a few survivors of that incident. Those would be the heroes who ventured down, of course. Oh... Including Pyra, the Fire Genasi Barbarian, who traveled alongside a very eccentric uh, weapons enthusiast who set our heroes on the quest. Valthiv, the Lizardfolk Cleric, formerly a sailor, failed a mutiny, and joined up with adventuring groups to honestly just get something to eat. Lee Markaren, member of the Tinker's Guild, performer, and... Owner of a very particular set of seduction skills. I, the tales do say that she seduced a tornado somehow, but uh, I'll, I'll take that with a grain of salt. I mean, you can watch it if you want. And Kaleil Torion, an elf from the wilds of the world, who came looking for his lost friend, a drow who happens to be the son of the drow's high priestess. Luckily, they managed to get his friend and their Arabund out of the temple before the actual fighting began, so he was safe, along with two people who traveled alongside our heroes after they helped save the carnival they were in from a kraken spawn. Nildra the Fire Breather, who lost her husband to the kraken spawn, and a man simply known as Larry who had a gas mask and was really high all the time, and somehow he won and survived against the cannibal god when a bunch of trained warriors didn't. The more I talk about it, the more I think that last tale was a little bit off the rails. Regardless, even though all of them came from different backgrounds, battling against a god is the sort of thing that brings people together. So though, for a time, they split up, every few months or so, they gathered back into a tavern on the port, the Rotten Rabbit, they called it. Why they called it that, no one dared to ask, because the instant someone did, the, uh, the owner would pull out a very large crossbow and say, don't, to share tales of what they'd been up to on their last adventures. Pyra used to join them, but eventually she had to sail to a far-off continent and could no longer make those meetings. It's been three years now since the defeat of the cannibal god at the Drow Temple. And once again, our heroes have gathered at the Rotten Rabbit Tavern to catch us up on what they've been doing since then. You all sit so, down. At, you all sit down at a table and get drinks. <laughs> so, guys, how you been? You gotten any good coin recently? Cause I have, but I won't brag about it just yet. I'll brag later. <laughs> coin, you say? Ah, I've gotten uh, a fair bit myself. Oh, really? Don't ask me how I got it. Oh. Uh, no, I'm gonna ask you now, because you've just piqued my interest. You can't just leave something like that. Exactly. I sure can. You know, <laughs> well, you know, says Mildred. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what I was going to guess. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I kind of got that, but I was asking, like, more, like, the details. Like, was it, like, on the high seas, or, like, did you just, like, pickpocket, or, you know, whatever. Well, you see, I was part of this fighting tournament, and you know what? I was robbed. Robbed, you say? Oh. I should have won, but that filthy cheater took my winnings, so you know what? I just had to knock it out and take it and run. But Well, you know, it really be like that sometimes. I, I guess so. You do what you gotta I do. I deserved that win! <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, you'd think people would show a little more respect and give the win to people who beat down a god, but apparently that only gets you so far. Apparently. That actually brings up a good point. How have you guys actually had any, what did they call it, renown of any sort? 
Do people recognize you? The answer to this question is some. Some of them, when they hear your tale and hear corroborating tales, will recognize, hey, that probably actually did happen. But it's a lot less than you would think. You know, whenever I tell, tell this tale, like, you know, in bars and stuff, people really go off the rocker into saying, like, oh, yeah, it was there. I saw it. And, I mean, obviously none of them were there and none of them saw it because we would have noticed. Some of them like to say that they're at the carnival. <sighs> they absolutely weren't. But, you know, those numbers are pretty small. Still, though, I think I do a pretty good job of, you know, spreading the word and getting a little... You know, a little bit of fame. I suppose so. I could personally yeah. do it without it a little bit. I'd rather just stay at home and just live my life in solitude. Well, that's your deal. I mean, you live for like 500 years anyway. I think you should add some spice to at least part of it. I'm only 124. Wow, little baby! Wow, oh, little, little tiny elf over here! Don't call me that. Oh, baby boy! Tiny baby man! Oh, you embarrassed. And as you so. Sorry, go ahead. So, so what about you, Lean? Uh, what have you been up to? Oh, you know, doing my usual stuff. I mean,. The, the, it's mixed up a little bit. I'm still selling goods that I make and whatever, but mostly I'm doing the classic, you know, go into a tavern, sing, tell some stuff, play some music, get people really just absolutely knocked out of their minds and have them give me tips. And then I get out of there. I mean, it keeps things interesting, and I don't really like to stay in one place for too long, because then they like get bored really fast. Then They'll be like, oh, who is that person? I've been having a really good time. As long as you've been keeping yourself busy, I suppose. Always yeah. certainly prefer to life than to you. Heck yeah, sounds like you've been doing very well for yourself. Oh yeah. And people really get a kick out of like, whenever I tell the story, or, you know, whenever I... I really messed up that ogre, and the time I seduced the tornado, they don't really believe the the tornado one, but, you know, they like to. I mean, can you blame them, though? I know, it's, it's kind of unbelievable, but that's just kind of how, who I am. Unbelievable. <laughs> I suppose so. And as you continue to chat at your table, uh, a city guard approaches the table, uh, slowly coughs, looks around, and says, Um, excuse me. You're, you're the lot that come in here every couple of months talking about how you, uh, beat a god, yes? Uh-huh. Uh, yes, that's us. Uh, well then, uh, do, do you think we, you could do us a, a little bit of a favor? Oh, Depends. we are kind of... You really think that the people that beat a god have an open schedule? Don't be rude to <laughs> uh, so, Sorry if it's if it's too much of your time, of course. I mean, if if, if you truly are busy, then far be it for me to keep you. I can I could be going right now if, if, that's, a, if that's what you want. Uh, I'm just joshing with you. I have nothing planned for the next, like, month. What's up? Ah, uh, well, um, you see... Uh, normally around this time of the night we close down the harbor, but uh, someone took one of our ships and sailed off into the night with them. We've been getting reports that uh, a cult of the Kraken has been operating within the city walls, kidnapping people and taking them out to sea, and, well, doing the math, it doesn't sound very good. Hmm. Ship stealers, you say? <sighs> Ship you got stealers some hijackers, and... you got some... Some commandeering of the ships that aren't really, you know, sink. Uh, that we do. Uh, normally we'd go after them ourselves, but uh, it would take far too long to get the paperwork out of the way, which is why I turn to you, Lot. 
at least one of you looks like you know something about sailing a ship. So, if if you could get down to the harbor, I could stall the others while you also get one of the ships, sail out, and hopefully stop the Kraken priest and his crew. Yeah. Um, so we're not local. Uh, is this Kraken cult, like, a thing? The Kraken cult is kind of a thing, yes. They, uh, they mostly trail around port cities or places along waterways for obvious reasons, since you can't exactly worship a Kraken when you're landlocked, uh, and unfortunately ours is the latest stop. Huh. So what's in it for us if we do this for you? Well, um, paying off your tab would be a good start, and, uh, the eternal gratitude and a portion of the retirement funds of several of us in the city guard. Mm. I think that sounds reasonable. Yeah, but crack I really don't want to deal with a Kraken. Like, if there's a Kraken there, we're out, because I'm really tired of Krakens. <laughs> and as, Lean, you say this, uh, Mildred takes a- s- chugs her glass of ale down, slams it on the desk, and is like, when do we start? <laughs> Kaleel just starts fidgeting with his glass, having finally started learning the wonders of alcohol. <laughs> Little baby boy can drink! <laughs> Little baby boy. Right, um... All right, then. I guess that's your answer. <laughs> Here you go. We're in. Ah, much obliged. Uh, and best of luck out there. Seas get kind of choppy at night. Better not get choppy with the Kraken. All right. Once I'm cracking out of this mission. <laughs> that one's Hey-o. Hey! I wouldn't expect a tip from that one. Yeah, I I was going to say payment for that is going to come after. Uh, Best of luck, all, he says, as you all gather up your stuff, head down to the harbor, and get on a boat. Now, Volthiv, you spent your your early life as a sailor. You know freaking immediately how to get this thing out and into the water, like, twice as fast as any other crew would, so... Immediately, you go out there, wind at your back, and start sailing out into the open waves of the sea. It is, uh, it's pretty stormy out there, unfortunately. But when has that ever stopped you? Eh. Eh, who cares? Exactly. It'll be fine. It's fine. Everything is fine. Don't mind me putting that up. It's not like I hinted at combat that was about to happen. I see. Mm. Oh, boy. All right. Only, what, like 15, 20 minutes in? (laughs) Yep. Welcome to the Cannibal Conspiracy Returns. (laughs) Uh, Oh, the the combat name. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As you sail out onto the water, it takes you 10, 15 minutes... But eventually, you do see it. There is another ship out there, around the same size and shape of your clipper, with several shapes on board, rowing it and cutting through the water as it, like, kind of pushes aside to let the boat pass even through the wind. You, on the other hand, are coming at an angle where the wind's at your back, and you can flank it. (laughs) Would Khalil nice. be able to recognize any figures or any shapes of any sort? Make a perception check. Woo, first check of the game. Better not screw it up. Mm. Screws it up. Okay. Uh, all of the figures do look humanoid, and you don't particularly recognize any of them. But you see, standing at the helm is a bald figure that looks like he's got tentacles sprouting out of his chin and moving. Oh, he looks scary. Points in general direction. Mm. Which one? That one right there. The bald one. Can we one. see him? Because he pointed it out. Uh, yeah, you can You can kind of see the figure now that Kaleo's pointed to, pointed to it. Ew, that guy looks like... Gross. Like he's got an octopus on his head or something. Yeah... That happens sometimes. Yeah, but is that, like, 
a thing that happens readily enough at sea for this guy to like not be a problem or do you think that like he's got a permanent octopus situation going on we should definitely be concerned this is something Volthov would know right or uh I would say yes Volthov make an arcana check with advantage hmm. roll again please <laughs> with advantage oh oh <laughs> <laughs> so oh, I'm taking no. the eight <laughs> Walter says, what the hell? I don't see anybody. You Walter spent... says, I just got back. I just got back and I'm dumb as a damn post. <laughs> uh, despite the eight, smart lad. you have heard of it because you spent like most of your life out on the sea. This is pretty common among Kraken priests to uh, have some part of their body deformed based on their worship of the Kraken. Ah, yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah, so while it's not common in every sailing situation, this is mostly the Kraken stuff that's been happening, you know. Oh, so he's an icky, yucky Kraken boy, and I hate Yeah, him. yep, mm hmm. Deal with one already. Great. Well, we're in a pretty good position to just surprise them, right? So. Yeah, we are. I suppose. And we're out here to beat them up anyway, so might as well. Yep. You've gotta reclaim the ships. Mm -hmm. uh, your ship has cannons and a gangplank available as uh, weaponry and or boarding equipment. <laughs> well, Mr. Pirate... Um, okay. <laughs> um, Bet you weren't expecting this. <laughs> nope, I was not. I wasn't prepared for this at all. Surprise! <laughs> We're starting um, with the thing Volt is good at. Wow. Good thing, too, because none of this was in Cannibal Conspiracy 1. <laughs> nope. Have Except fun. for the part where we had a boat after the, it flooded at the carnival. Except it was a crappy boat. It was a crappy yeah. boat and both have just swam. <laughs> yeah. Yep. You know, as you do. As you do. So, since these guys are a whole bag of dicks, then we should definitely... Well, let's see if we can get a little closer just so they don't scare him off with cannon fire. And cool. then... See, I'm, I'm tapping into this stupid lad's mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, try and use the... Um, sorry, what, do, what all do we have? So we have gangplanks, cannons... That's about it. That's it. <laughs> Well, that's that's not all we have. We also have uh, we have violins, swords, bows, a literal a literal lizard folk, and soap. So yeah. I mean, and a woman who can breathe soap? fire because she insisted on going and along with the hunt dragon. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how much that's gonna yeah. help unless we want to like light multiple cans at once. I mean, that might be fun. <laughs> I have I still have my wind fan. <laughs> <laughs> you still have your wind fan. Well, you still all have right. It. Oh. I mean, yeah, I did. I mean, it's a pretty away. cool fan. It, it is a nice fan. I have two costumes. If we want those. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, okay. Hold Wait, on. Shit, I have three Wait. costumes. Can, can I cast fog cloud around them? Uh, absolutely. Go for it. <laughs> I'm gonna do that. Oh, make it scary. Ooh. Oh, scare me. So scary. Scary. Alright. All slots suspended. Who did, why? We just started. Uh, you can, like, put the arrow back up to however many slots you start with, because that should not be happening. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Alright. Uh, Volfiv, you raise your holy symbol of cord chant some uh, sacred words, and then 
fog surrounds their ship. And as it does so, Kaleel, because you have the best perception, you can see the various uh, humanoid figures on board. Look up, look around, see what's going on. And then you hear the Kraken Priest yell, What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, now that they're shrouded in a thick fog, um... <clears throat> we'll get um, close! Yeah. And then we'll get him! Oh. oh, I'm gonna get you. Oh, disadvantage. Uh, okay. He had disadvantage because there's a fog cloud around him. Mm-hmm. That you, uh, sail the ship closer, uh, and as you do so, the Kraken Priest notices movement through the fog, turns your way, Fuck. curses, and yells, We got company, lads! It is time to roll initiative! This is going to be a theater of the mind battle, because uh, I have a map for this. We have not fulfilled the conditions to go on the map. You will understand once we do get to it. You better not be a crack. <laughs> I'm going to freaking pee my pants and leave the game. <laughs> So are we rolling turn order, or...? You are rolling initiative, yes. Okay. Um, okay. Oh, hey, that's pretty Woo! good! Wow, hey! I feel lame in oh, comparison. Okay. Wow, okay. I feel like a freaking idiot. <laughs> My nine. You fuckers are ready! <laughs> Except for me! We want to liberate this ship! Ah! <laughs> This really helps, actually. I just want to beat up that stinky, smelly octopus. Wow, I know what really a smelly that. octopus! I've actually been really into octopuses lately. <laughs> I see. Oh, I smell takoyaki! No, not like that! Like, I've been watching <laughs> videos of them doing cute stuff on YouTube. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, as far as what's directly in front of us, I smell takoyaki. Absolutely. Uh, all right. Uh, you sail in close to the uh, Kraken Colt's ship. Kaleo, you immediately are ready to take action. <laughs> what do you do? So I'm going to... All right. So Kaleo is going to um, take a shot at the, at the captain. And because he has Natural Explorer, he has advantage on attack rolls against creatures that have not yet acted. So Ooh. let's do this. Uh, longbow with advantage. I am so glad I had the first turn this game. <laughs> oh, that didn't matter. Oh yeah, that's a hit. <laughs> uh, ba -ba -ba. That doesn't trigger... I'm assuming that doesn't trigger sneak attack, so I'm just gonna um, do regular damage. You have advantage, so yes it does. Oh, okay then. That's. The, I think that's a general rule for sneak attack. <laughs> cool. Alright. Quickly, you knock an arrow and loose it through the fog, striking the Kraken Priest directly in the shoulder. Kaleo is then going to take the opportunity uh, to hide himself within the fog by using Mask of the Wild, which uh, he can hide basically in any kind of natural phenomena, which fog is. Yep. Well, congratulations on uh, being... <laughs> Uh, tactical somehow. You are working together in these three years. <laughs> this is wow. crazy. Wow. This is going so well. I sure hope nothing bad happens. I Guess sure what? Something do. Something bad happens. We have a card. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Anathema, for the bits. That's enough to draw a card from the deck of many horrors. Oh, I'm very scared. Good. I right, do hope we first. don't get an insta kill. Oh, well, I guess. The Kraken just I shows up. <laughs> Dude, God! I hate, I hate you. I hate. All right. I guess I'm doing. This. And you know, as we all know, I have great luck with drawing cards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh dear. All right. What do we? Got Please here? get something that so that we can play the the dues. I just need them. <laughs> yeah. I hate you. The song what of the this? damned happens. What the executioner. <laughs> oh, that Please seems fun. That's good. That sounds so good. <laughs> this, is, this is a good oh. time, right? Yeah, this, what could possibly go wrong? Anna, I hate you. So, the deck of many horrors differs a little bit from the deck of magic things in that there are specific times where it makes sense to uh, to put these on uh, into effect. 
Luckily for the executioner, <laughs> I can go ahead and say that time is now. Because uh, as you hide, Kaleo, you swear you see this uh, shadowy figure on a horseback, siphon hand, on the deck of the boat, uh, just staring down towards the helm of the ship, where Larry has been steering. <laughs> oh. Larry! Larry! No. What is he... T- I- I- at Larry? He looks to be gazing specifically at Larry. <laughs> oh. Can I stop? Oh, I don't have an extra attack. I can't stop him. Fuck. Mm. Ah! Wolfim, you're up. Ah. Larry's gone. We don't know Larry anymore. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, this is one of those rare instances where we probably don't want cards. Uh, I will say that the deck of many horrors is much more stacked against you than the deck of magic things. Don't give us cards! But then we won't get money. Um, so how far away is the other ship, just generally speaking, now? Uh, just generally speaking, I will say that, uh, you are within 60 feet if you walk up to the edge of your deck to go fight it. Can I do shatter then? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Woo! All right. Uh... You, uh, again, raise your holy symbol, and with a voice like thunder, this piercing noise, uh, fills the air and breaks against the side of the ship as I make the ship's saving throw. It's got disadvantage. Rip. I see. We said we'd bring back the ship. We didn't say in what condition. Mm-hmm. It, uh, <laughs> I think it just failed. So, bam! There is now a hole in the ship, and you can see through the hole... Barrels of gunpowder. <laughs> oh. oh, this ship was going to be dead anyway. <laughs> mm. All right. Uh, so, uh, in initiative count 20, I will say that unless NPCs have a very specific stat block, that is when they act, losing ties. So, Nildra looks over, sees the barrel of gunpowder, pulls out her fire-breathing equipment, and is like, you want me to, or... <laughs> Kaleo looks to the other two. Um. Oh boy. <laughs> oh. Do I look like a person that makes good decisions? <laughs> How close is the boat to our boat? Around 60 it's, feet at the closest. Around 60 feet away. And. How. What's the word I'm looking for? Um. Did blow that boat to kingdom come. What is the likelihood that we would get caught in the crossfire? Uh, make an intelligence check, Kaleo. Oh. Oh. Yeah, like, how much gunpowder is there? Uh... Shrug! (laughs) (laughs) I'm not so sure about that. All right, then, she says holding the equipment at the ready just in case. As you see, clop, 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 the skeletal uh, horseback figure right across the deck and just jam his scythe directly into Larry. Oh! No! Oh. Bye, Larry. Well, can't look forever. Well, uh, unfortunately, as Larry slumps across the wheel, your boat starts wildly turning. Oh, we need someone to drive the boat. Can I, can I go sh- rush over there and, like, take hold of the helm? Uh, I'll say you're on your way over there, but you can't quite make it. Because you already did take your turn. Fair. I didn't move, though. You didn't move. Uh, the boat is pretty big, I will say that. So, anyway. I... Uh, it is the Kraken Priest's turn. 
He's going to look at this wildly pitching boat with people who are shooting arrows in him and blowing holes in the ship, sigh heavily, and slam a staff against the deck of the boat three times, and this deep <laughs> echoes across uh, the water as Lean casts tongues. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Also, I no, I have my spell slots. I don't know why everything is going wrong on my end. <laughs> why does everyone say all spell slots expended? You just got here. <laughs> we didn't have time to prepare. <laughs> it is, however, Lean's turn. So. <laughs> okay, I'm, I cast tongues. <laughs> no. I have to. I have to know what they're saying. All right. Um. I'm not actually doing that. Uh, okay. okay. Um. <coughs> um. Are there winds right there, now? There are indeed winds. Shit. Fucking hate that so much. <laughs> uh. I don't know. Um. And we're 60 feet away from the other boat. Yes. So... I could either use Mage Hand to stabilize the boat, our boat. I could steer it with Mage Hand. Or... Maybe... I could just throw a Shatter over on their boat, because Shatter's range is 60 feet. So... I mean, that might be fun. That might be cute. Yeah, let's do that. <coughs> yeah. They'll think that they got hit with something, but they didn't. And then they'll be Heck like, yeah. oh my god, what happened? And they'll be like, why is this happening again? <laughs> what happened? Oh. Oh. So it made the Probably. saving throw somehow, but it, 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 it so it takes half damage as more piercing cries echo through the night and blow holes in the boat. One of the mm -hmm. gunpowder barrels tips over. <laughs> oh, well. There that goes. I really yep. like that. Uh, the bandits slash pirate sailors are taken by surprise. So basically they're getting to positions like, what? What the fuck's going on? What happened? So that is the entirety of their turn. So we're back to Kaleil. Oh, in that case, I think Kaleil is going to try and take advantage of that and shoot one of the bandits then. Cool. Uh, let's try... Right in, right in the forehead, because why not? Forehead, getting shot in the forehead fucking suck. Uh, so just regular, no advantage. Oh. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. goodness. Oh well, my. Then. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you hit the bandit so hard in the forehead, he tumbles back and tumbles downstairs below deck. <laughs> yeah! Nice <God. laughs> Um, uh, I I don't really know what else to do with my turn, so I think I'm just gonna have him hide. But what what is that thing that holds the holds the the mast? What is that called again? The thing that holds the mast. The, uh, the pole, whatever that's called. I think it, the pole is the mast. Oh well, in that case, yeah. uh, Kaleel's gonna hide behind the mast, so use that as cover. Cool. All right. It is now Valthus' turn. Oh, it sure is. Um, so, can I finish my adventure towards the helm so I can get control back of the ship? Absolutely! Yay! Um, and then... So... Alright. And then... Um... From there, I think, hmm, one of the few things that I can do, because I'm also thinking about, like, um, generally just not being able to actually see them directly because they're in fog. Uh, I don't know, sacred flame in their general direction. I don't know how many people are on the, on the other ship, so. A lot. <laughs> I'm bound to hit someone, damn it, then! Absolutely! <laughs> And who knows? It'll probably hit a gun, like gunpowder barrel, and explode everything. You know the thing we were trying probably to avoid. Probably. 
Yeah. Mm, was, However, th- that boat's toast. <coughs> that yeah, that that boat's not gonna be coming back with us. Maybe we'll we'll bring black back a plank or two, but it's not coming back as a whole. <laughs> Plus, if that dude like overheard any of our conversations when he asked us to help. Fish would know we do a sloppy ass job. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He knew what he was gonna do. So. Is there a way to both to be both efficient and sloppy? Yes. Uh, What's the yeah. Catholic conspiracy right. one? It's That's what we're fair. doing right now. We are both efficient workers and sloppy workers. So I'm gonna at least try and aim sacred flame towards something that's not directly above a <coughs> gunpowder barrel, which it sounds like there's a lot, so we'll see how this goes. Alright. He's not a clever lad. Or He's a not. smart lad. Oh. Neither are the bandits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this... <laughs> they, one of the bandits is struck by a radiant burst of light and flame and runs off diving into the water screaming. Unfortunately, you don't think anything down there, do you? Perfect timing, Kaleo, because right as he jumps up, you see bubbles uh, quickly approaching the surface of the water, and this gigantic, many tentacled, many eyed monstrosity bursts from the water with a loud, echoing screech. Nope. Oh. Oh. I don't like that. Mm-hmm. Me neither. I just, I just, nope. <laughs> yep. Uh, I'm sorry, Lean. Yeah, you look over it and you recognize this. This is the exact same Kraken spawn that menaced the carnival all those years ago. Oh my He's god. He's grown up and he is further oh no. mutated. Aw, oh, big boy. <laughs> big boy. I want to see him. <laughs> all right. And immediately as he surfaces, Mildra. Uh, narrows her eyes. There you are, you son of a bitch. And breathes a stream of fire directly onto the fucking Kraken. <laughs> Yay! I, I'm taking the six. He does not have advantage and is set right <laughs> the fuck on fire. Crake spawn. Crake spawn. <laughs> oh boy. Yep. Alright, so. That is the initial damage. The Kraken spawn is set on fire and starts flailing around, uh, sending embers everywhere, including onto the other ship. <laughs> so what you're saying is oh a giant flaming octopus. Yes. May I? Just this once. Just, Go ahead. Can I hear that just this once? Go ahead. You can hear the giant flaming octopus cry just this once, Scott. Ah! <laughs> anyways anyways uh the kraken spot the kraken priest rather it is his turn now he sees the kraken spawn flailing around sighs heavily again raises the staff and there is a lightning bolt coming down from the sky onto your ship. Oh. Excuse me? <coughs> Motherfucker called a storm. Oh. Bitch. Bitch. Two can play at this game. Can we? Uh, uh yes. yeah, sure we can. You want, I'm gonna put a fart in his oh, mouth. Oh, that's a DC of zero, okay. Something <laughs> fucked up the Kraken oh. Priest spellcasting <laughs> ability. The, the DC is supposed to be 13. <laughs> this bitch a poorly formatted character sheet <laughs> oh shit how do we beat a DC of zero it can't I, be done I don't know oh shit fuck you <laughs> anyway yeah your boat is now struck by lightning and has a hole in its side so that's fun Oh hell no. Hang on, I have a really quick question. I know it's not my turn, but like... Yes. Okay, so I have Call Lightning. Can I use this storm to like... 
kind of help with that. Because <laughs> uh, it's basically the same thing. Yep, he did cast Call Lightning, and it, that is the same exact spell, so if you wanted to do that, by all means. <laughs> Would it still use a, a spell slot for me? Because I didn't cast the initial one. Uh... It would still use a spell slot to cast Call Lightning. Because <laughs> for both of you, it would be entreating your deity, in his case it's the Kraken, and yours it is Kord, Lord of the Storm, to say, mm -hmm. hey, you know all this lightning? Could you direct it over there? Thanks. Yes. Okay. <laughs> all right. <coughs> Lean. Hi. Um... I really want to put a fart in its mouth, but now I'm, like, not sure. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is very important. The Kraken, the bandit, or the priest? Uh, the Kraken. <laughs> now I'm thinking about... <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys. This I have so many... Of... I swear. Yeah. Um... I want to point out, Cannibal Conspiracy 2 is a serious campaign. I'm just playing with these people. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's it's my fault. It, it This is my fault. Um, Yeah, because I also have Tasha's Hideous Laughter. It's one of the famous Cannibal Conspiracy spells. Uh, I don't remember having it, but uh, seeing it on my list, I do remember using it a lot. Um, does the Kraken need to breathe? Um... One would assume yes. Yes! That means I can put the fart in his mouth. Okay. Well, <laughs> it's, it's well. gonna be... It's gonna be... <laughs> I'm sorry, I read, I read the chat. Um, I'm gonna just... Um, we're gonna do that. Okay. Um, doing that. <laughs> centered inside of the... Mooth, you would say, of the boy. Okay, so here's um, here's the thing. He doesn't need to breathe, but he is immune to poison. However, because I'm a <laughs> nice DM, he's also on fire, and you put a lot of gas around him. Oh, yes. oh. oh no. well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my stinky cloud. <laughs> Your stinking cloud fucking explodes on the Kraken. <laughs> I don't even need to concentrate, because it just exploded. Environmental kill. Boom! Nice. All right. That done, one of the bandits finally manages to get to a cannon, aim it at the ship, and he prepares to fire. Oh, wait. What? It misses. It just flies Woo! directly over the ship because he can't see <laughs> shit in the fog. <laughs> I was going to say um, before my turn ended, but I forgot and I'm stupid. Uh, I give Bardic Inspiration to Kaleo. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. I forgot that was the thing I could do because I'm a bard. <clears throat> All right. So, all right. It is now the Kraken's turn. Yes. He's just like, what the fuck, guys? What the f I, guys, I I'm in water here. and I'm on fire! What the <laughs> hell is this? As he swims directly for the boat. So let me read out this multi attack so you know just how fucking busted the Kraken Spawn oh, is. No. Yeah, that's oh. why we gotta destroy him. The Kraken Spawn makes eight tentacle attacks and one bite attack. I see. Uh, so <laughs> welcome to session one. Here we go, boys. He's attacking your ship. <coughs> Wham! Uh, ship's AC is fifteen, so that doesn't hit. That, stupid however, does. AC. Apparently, it does necrotic damage. Yes, it does. That's just wow, eight. Wow. This thing is just uh, fucking wailing on your shit! Jesus Christ. He really did not like my stinky cloud. <laughs> your stinky cloud Yeah, sucked. I think you pissed him off a bit. Four, five, Ooh, six, you seven, stink. eight. <laughs> eight, eight six, yeah, seven. um, the ship is now kind of listing a little bit with a lot of rotting wood on it. 
And then he's gonna bite it because he's a stupid motherfucker. <laughs> Congratulations, he's now gnawing on some rotting wood and tearing holes in the front of the boat. Okay, yes. This isn't even my ship, and I'm I'm very, very offended. Hmm. We right. need to get them eyes. So, hypothetically speaking, Alex, if you were to put a number on this ship, uh, how fucked are we? I would say you are below half of what the ship would love to be at <coughs> at all times. I see. <laughs> You're making me pull out all of my freaking freaking spell slots right here. Ooh. Oh, Jesus. Uh, no. Hold on. Oh. I'm coming back. Yeah, and Kaleo just nopes out of there at the bottom. <laughs> <It's like, laughs> <"Bye!" laughs> it's been great, guys. It's been fun. Not really, though. Anyways. No. <laughs> Um, so let's see. Okay. So whose turn is it? Yours now. Oh, okay then. So yeah, Kaleo's focus is less on the people on the ship now and more just on the Kraken spawn because this thing is kind of tearing our boat apart and we don't want that. So... <coughs> If he can fire an arrow somewhere in between its eyes, or better yet, in its eyes, then maybe it won't be able to see the fucking boat. Who knows? Who Let's knows? give it a shot. Let's give it a shot. Do actually, anything. Actually, is there any um, flammable? Any any flammable? Any say anything from the boat at the moment? Or you could probably find a flask of oil. I'd like to create a fire arrow if I can. You can shoot with disadvantage to add some fire damage. I'll take it. Fair enough. Here we go. Square logic. I'm a wood elf. Yep. <laughs> oh! That's a hit. <laughs> uh, what do I add to this? Uh, add an additional 1d8. Additional 1d8. Okie doke. So. Come on. Come on. There we go. That, whoa. Okay, ignore sneak attack. Sorry. Uh, you know what? Fuck it. I'll have the sneak attack damage be the fire damage. Oh, okay. Well, ignore the three then. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, you continue to add fuel to the fire, as well as plunging an arrow directly into the side of this massive octopus monster. <laughs> Valthiv! Get down, get down! Yeah? It's your turn, Valthiv. I know, okay. So, theoretically, how far away can I get this ship in my turn? Theoretically, another 60 feet or so. Okay, 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 so okay. I'm gonna move, I'm gonna move the ship to that 60 feet away, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna like, whew, mm -hmm. the only thing that I know that can potentially help, and I'm gonna make a goddamn whirlpool. Oh no, oh no. <laughs> Nice. All right. Once more, you call on the might of the Lord of the Storms, and you create a whirlpool. Where are you centering it, by the way? On the goddamn Kraken. On the Kraken! <laughs> Wherever it's out of range. Uh, yeah, that's better. Okay. So, uh... The water near the Kraken starts swirling around, trying to drag it into the depths as it must make. An athletics check. Oh, wait, strength saving throw. Okay. He's not got in the vortex. But, oh, uh, bastard. But he does take half uh, of 2d8 worth of damage, I believe. That's okay. Hold on, let me grab... Alright, uh, 
as he is bashed around by water and thinking, wait a minute, shouldn't this water be helping me? After all, I am on fire. Ow! 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 <laughs> uh, it is then Mildred's turn. She is once again going to set this freaking kraken on fire, but then she notices, wait, cannon. That's gonna hurt more. So she's gonna turn and aim a cannon at the kraken spawn and fire it. Yay! That's just enough to hit. Nice. I do not remember the exact formula for cannon damage, so I'm just going to do this. <laughs> oh! I see. <laughs> oh, I see. Yep. It may, in fact, be more than that is the thing, so... Should I look it up? Ooh. Yeah. If you would not mind. Uh, D&D &D 5e cannon. D&D 5e All right, D and D. Uh, how much damage would a cannon do? Yep. And let's see, an eight D ten roll. Eight D ten. Okay. I'll take whatever's higher. Forty six damage. Wow! It totally rolled that with an eight D ten. Totally rolled that. <laughs> All right. And as the cannon shot strikes the kraken, and it hisses in pain. The embers that it flung onto the other ship trail down into the gunpowder barrel room. Boom! One of them erupts in a column of fire, causing a chain reaction that starts causing the other boat to go up in smoke. <laughs> you can see why yay. I wanted to wait! <laughs> oh. Well, first of all, yay tokens. Yay tokens! Y'all can yeah. see where you are now! Oh man, why am I right by the gangplank? <laughs> oh man, well no one else is doing anything oh, to be man. right by the gangplank, so... <laughs> oh, this is so awkward. Yep. So, the priest is going to look at the Kraken getting shot and set on fire, look at his boat getting set on fire, and say, Fuck this! And walk into the captain's quarters, <laughs> shut the door behind him. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Coward! Yeah. You, Come uh, back here. You hear uh, some arcane chanting and a flash of light and he gone. <laughs> he gone. Hey. I'm back. Hey. Whatever. We just don't have to deal with him. Yep. I guess. Yeah, the Kraken still... Spawn's still here. We, yeah, we still have other problems. Lean, it is your turn. Uh, okay. Um, I have a fireball that I can throw. Do you, th do you guys think I should throw it at the, um, big boy? Hmm. Hmm. How effective will it be? Well, it's a fireball, and he's a big boy in water. But it stopped the fire before. Yeah, I mean that's true. And uh I mean yeah, just it is a fireball. It's it's that's just it. Pretty good. It's a pretty good spell. It's the most powerful attacking spell that I have, so I think that's gonna be what I'm gonna do. Just be right. sure to be careful where to aim it. Yeah, at um, him. Oh, also, yeah, it goes right. around corners somehow, so just don't even remember, worry about it. Just remember its radius is what I'm saying. Well, uh, radius is... Um, oh, 20 foot radius. You don't want to hit the boat. Yeah, hang on one second. <clears throat> uh... Okay, uh, jeez. I wish it was- I wish that Kraken was, like, over here, and then I could, like, have it be, like, <sighs> over here. Yeah, oh well. Uh, well, I guess I'll have to- I'm just gonna target him, because I feel like if I target him and blast him directly, I don't think it's gonna spread that far. Because, like, we're in a storm. Could try aiming here, and then... 
But then he's just going to get peripheral damage. No such thing for the fireball spell. Uh, Anything so it, is better than hitting the boat at this point, because we are half dead. Okay, I guess I'll just uh, shoot it over there then. Cool. With the great kaboom, you summon forth a Ooh. fireball that absolutely wrecks this man because he's like, <laughs> Ha! I have nothing to fear from fire anymore! Wait, what's that? Ah! <laughs> Is that the sun? Oh! oh. <laughs> Alright, and that is... 28 fireball damage because he just got absolutely roasted and not didn't see it coming. So that is that much health left? I don't see how much health that is left. Uh, I know you don't. I'm not revealing it. <laughs> then you shouldn't say that much. <laughs> uh, that much is so that I am letting you know that I am adjusting his health but not showing you the exact number. <laughs> you know what? Fair. All right. Uh, one of the bandits is desperately looking for a cannon that's not on fire. Whoops, doesn't look like there is one. So he's just going to be a little petty douchebag and shoot a crossbow bolt at Liam. <laughs> wow. Oh, Aww. wow. <laughs> right in the tit. Again. Oh, again. Again. Wow, such gratuitous tit violence against Liam. The others are desperately trying to put out the fire on the boat. Uh, the Kraken spawn, seeing that it is on fire, has been on fire for a whole lot, <laughs> and is continuing to be on fire, is going to dive down to get away from that. Hey. Hey. And come back over here. Oh, Ooh. come on. Ooh. No, uh, that that's good. Yeah, I know, but he came back right after I casted the fireball. <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's yeah. fine. Kaleo! So, alright, so Kale Right, anyways. So Kaleo is going to... Well, over here. Underneath of... Underneath of the mast. And take another pot shot at the Kraken, because it worked so well the last time. Alright. So he's gonna take out his longbow, uh, grab the drawstring, and... check to make sure he doesn't have disadvantage, because, yeah. Alright. Yep. That is just barely a miss. The Kraken flails around, and whew, your arrow barely passes Ooh. between its tentacles and embeds itself in the side of the ship. In that case, Kaleel is still just... Yeah, Kaleel is just going to hide underneath of the shadow right here. Uh, do I need to make a stealth check, or...? Uh, yes. Alrighty. Stealth. Cool. And its perception is not very good. Oh. <laughs> All uh, of the Kraken's eyes no, wait, turn to you, Kaleel. No, wait, yeah, you're right. Yeah. If it doesn't have training in a skill, it uses the base ability modifier. Okay. Welp. Welp. Oh. Volfif. <laughs> okay, I think it's time to take control of this storm. Could, could you have done that earlier? Yeah, but I was hoping the whirlpool would work. <laughs> uh... <laughs> So I'm gonna do I'm gonna do what I said I would do uh, earlier and be a bastard boyo. Lightning onto the Kraken or the ship? On the Kraken. <clears throat> cool. He's not a fast boyo, so as he rises from the water, <laughs> once more, you call upon the power of the storm and strike him directly with a bolt of lightning. Yay! Woo! Uh, great. It is now Mildred's turn. She is going to, once more, walk over here, take out fire-breathing stuff, breathe it, the crack and spawn, and get the boat, too, while she's at it, because he's right in front of it. 
just barely a miss, so I believe it was 3d8. Alrighty. It's doing more damage to the ship than it is the Kraken. That's fair. <coughs> yeah. Ah, of course. Yeah. But as all the chaos is happening, you hear uh, a voice from below the deck of the other ship yell, Hello? Anyone out there? Um, there's a lot of fire here. Could really use some help. Oh, no. Do they have a hostage? The Almost. guard... The guard did mention they kidnapped some people. Didn't Wait. pay attention to that part. And those those people are somehow still alive after that giant explosion. Somehow, yes. What's good on oh, them? That is so awkward. I didn't... Oh, Jesus, I didn't know we'd be dealing with... Oh, We're geez. not a careful people! This is more leaning towards just on the next turn, but yeah. Y you guys keep fighting them off. I'll go find the hostage. Sounds good. Um, Good luck. Well, this is awkward. I don't really know what to do right now. Uh... Huh. Hmm. Take out the bandits, but don't take out the boat. Sure, that sounds good. Um, I will maybe... Uh... You could try going with Kaleel and offer support. I mean, yeah, because I can go on to... Because we're, we're going to have to go onto the ship. Yep. So... I suppose that's true. And there's mm -hmm. people still on the ship. Yeah, um, so I'll, I guess, start going onto the ship, because I guess Kalel and I can both go on there. Yep. Even though Kalel is better suited to, like, actually go down and get them. Um, I'm gonna then just, um, you know, start scooting. Yeah. You can start clearing a path, at least. Yeah, I'm gonna be... I board the ship! <laughs> and I'll, uh... Attack one of these bastards. Attack the bastard. Attack a bastard. I guess, um. Oh my goodness, I forgot <coughs> that I had all these things. Wow. Uh. I. I guess I. I guess I'm doing this. Cool. And I'm gonna. Can I even do it? Wait, what's my. Jesus, it's been a while since I've played lane. Uh, 25 is my speed. Mm -hmm. Why is 25 my speed? I'm all Because you're a halfling. Oh, yeah. Got tiny little legs. All right, yeah. Oh, you played her a couple sessions ago in Cursed Throne. <laughs> Please watch Cursed Throne. Please watch Cursed Throne. <laughs> Please. Well, I can't smack him with my quarter staff because he's just too far away. Um, there was something at him. I don't know. Mm. Cast a spell? I, cantrip, maybe? <laughs> uh, a vicious mockery. You do? Mock him. Mock him good. Ooh. <coughs> um. Oh, I, I can barely even see him, so I can't even make any stupid insults. Wait, how I guess, were you yeah, okay? Okay, uh, Okay, well, I'll just do Vicious Mockery. Nice. We love a six. Mm, who, are you, who are you mocking and who? what are you saying to him? I'm saying uh, to, to this one. Mm -hmm. um, do I have to have a specific thing? God, I wasn't ready for this. <laughs> it helps. Um, <laughs> If it makes you feel any better, when Walrus plays Krevlon, he doesn't always have the, the best of insults, but they're always the most effective because they're so bad. Uh, boy, you're out here looking like a fucking... Boy, you're looking out here like a... Uh, like a... Uh, shit. This is how she's delivering it, too. Uh, <laughs> uh, shit. Like a... Oh, shit. Oh, my God. You look like a... You're ugly. <laughs> How dare you! I take great personal pride in me appearance! <laughs> <coughs> and he's got disadvantage because you vicious mocked him. Oh. Wow. 
Tiny at the same. That's my. That's my AC. Okay, matching hits on the attacker's part. So he just uh, slashes at you for saying, "Boy, he ugly." While his buddy cannot take advantage of flanking because of vicious mockery, so he's just gonna charge in and attack with the scimitar too. I'll take the twelve. That's a miss. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> wow, I did really good. <laughs> wow, you did really good. Yeah. And then uh, the man is like, yeah, guys, you get, gu- guys, guys, boat's still on fire. <laughs> and he's just desperately trying to put out the boat on fire. <laughs> the but Kraken, you called me ugly. <laughs> yeah. The Kraken spawn uh, shudders, opens its beak, and sprays a bunch of half-digested food over the deck, which will hit... I believe just Nildra, because fuck Nildra in particular. I oh. don't like that. <coughs> Alright. Oh. So that's four acid damage as she's covered in this thing's lunch. And she doesn't particularly have a good constitution score. And she's just like, oh my god. And stands there stunned. Poor thing. Kaleo. Kaleo is going to take a step back, not on the map because, oh god, I don't want to use my movement for that, and make a running leap to the side of the boat. That athletics, is a stupid right? idea. Athletics check. <laughs> Just <laughs> athletics? Just athletics. Oh god, you're going to make me jump in the water after you. You're also going to oh. leave me with these two guys. Ah! You make it there. Oh. And you splash down into the water between the boats. How much movement does it take to get back <laughs> up? A uh, double movement to swim through water and to clamber on board. Uh, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. You would get to the <clears throat> side of the boat. You know what? That's fine. I'm going to... I, I see... Kaleo sees that Lean is partially surrounded and is like, yeah, fuck that shit, and is going to aim for this one in particular and just try and get them off her back. Cool. So let's go. You got disadvantage. Go. I have disadvantage? You're in the water and you're firing up at a dude. Wait, I thought I got back up. No, you didn't. You got to the side of the boat. I apologize for not being clear with that. So you're like resting okay. against the side of it. I'm trying. I, he's trying so hard. Uh, that is just barely a miss. It uh, lands at the bandit's feet. Why does he have disadvantage? Because he is in the water, firing up at a bad angle. Oh yeah, that would be dis- that would be disadvantageous. Uh, this is not a good. Mo- well, I would say this is not a good day, but that's not true because yeah. Okay. Uh. I don't want to hide because that means going underwater at this point, so... You could dash and try to actually get on the boat. Why didn't I do that before? I'm a moron. Okay, you know what? That's a good idea. Uh, I will dash. Uh, but that requires the remaining of my movement, right? Mm-hmm. I have, what, ten left, or...? <laughs> uh, you have ten feet of movement left. Great. Five. Woo. <laughs> Why didn't I do that first? Alright. Valthiv! Oh, boy, oh. Kalel, you're gonna give me a heart attack. I'm sorry. That's chill. Um. <clears throat> yeah, poopy. I was so worried about what I'd have to do just in case, and I didn't think... Um. Uh, um. Help lean. Uh, yeah. Help lean. Uh, what the, but doing it with what? I know. <coughs> I'm gonna do some more sacred flame. Okay, don't hit me. All right. I don't think it does like surrounding damage. I think it's just on a point. Yeah. Sacred is. flame is single target. <coughs> <laughs> All right. I'll teach you to call me ugly. Ah! As he's struck by a bolt of radiant light <laughs> from above. Nice. 
Wow, now you look even worse. <laughs> and now you're dead. <laughs> Should go to a doctor about that. Uh, and now you're on fucking fire! The last words he hears is the last that the, he, he's dying and he hears, Wow, you look fucking horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe. Famous and, last words you hear. And Nildra is incapacitated, so she cannot do anything this turn. So, oh, that's a gross. Mm -hmm. Green. Okay. This guy's turn. You want a fucking piece of this? You want a piece of this halfling? Huh? Quarter yeah. staff. No, why do you want a piece of this? So I, I can hit I'm this. I'm disgusting that you said yes. <laughs> it's because of that you say yes that I got 09. <laughs> it is not <laughs> enough to hit, unfortunately. <laughs> Well, no. I mean, it's a, it's a valid question. You asked. Oh, well, sure, but now I'm regretting asking. I'm, like, kind of confused. You're supposed to hit him. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so you're just kind of just flailing around scimitars and quarterstaffs, <laughs> bonking against each other, neither doing any lasting damage. No. Uh, Bandit still trying to put out fire and failing, because it's part of the map and cannot move. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's the Kraken Spawn's <laughs> turn. Oh no. It's no. time to smack the ship again. No. no. Oh. That's a miss. What happens if it gets in that one? That is just a miss as it goes doing, 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 doing against the side of the ship. <laughs> Five. Six. I don't like this. Seven. Yeah. Eight. Nine. That's the multi-attack. Yo. <laughs> we gonna be swimming back. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. Climb on my back. We're swimming. <laughs> <sighs> the boat's front just breaks right off. And the whole thing starts slowly tilting down towards Stop the water. Fuck. Ah! I don't think we're gonna get paid. Alright. Galail! Right. Okay. Uh. Does Lean look like she's gonna. This is speaking to Lean. Well, I mean, you know. Does Lean look like she's gonna be okay with this guy, or. Uh. I feel fine. I'll give backup support if, if she needs it. Just cool. go at least try and find the people. <clears throat> yeah, um, you should go find the people. I, I've yeah, got I'm this. Gonna, my next question was, Alex, where it, it, where is there an entrance to the bottom of the ship or, you know, the deck or whatever? Uh, Looks like one right by the <clears throat> stairs up to lean, just going the other way. Lael is going to make a dash toward that then. Yeet down there. Cool. Make an investigation check. You got it. Investigation. All right. Pretty much immediately, you see a figure stumbling out of a cloud of smoke and fire, coughing. Uh, it looks to be a rather rather skinny humanoid figure wearing a hooded green cloak with a purple top. Let me double check the art because he's got it. And tattered uh, sleeves and pants. Make well. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, Ooh. Uh, he sees. Uh, he sees you in uh, in silhouette against the stairwells and flinches at the sight. Are, are you okay, sir? Uh, Nothing broken. Not not as far as I can tell. It's ship's on fire, right? It, 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 we're gonna get you to safety, though. Okay, okay, that'd be nice. I'm debating on whether or not I should... Mm. Actually, the ship is in no... Mm. Oh. Right. Ain't nowhere safe right now. I actually don't know what move to make now. <laughs> I guess the best move is to kill the Kraken spawn, because that's the biggest threat at the moment. Yeah, I mean, if we're gonna get home 
anyway, we're gonna need this to not be a problem. That said, yeah. take another. I'm gonna take that same play from Alex from earlier. Da, da, and dip an arrow in fire. All right. Da, da, and aim it at the kraken. Disadvantage, right? Disadvantage. Come on, baby. Please. <laughs> That's enough to hit it! <laughs> Yay! Uh, plus 1d8, or am I doing the sneak attack? Do the sneak attack. Alright. Alright. Uh, as the Kraken screeches, having taken down the ship, covered in oil and a little bit of gunpowder, you loose a flaming arrow through the storm and plunge it directly into the beast. It uh, ignites the powder, causing it to explode as the Kraken rise and screams in pain and slowly sinks below the waves. Nice! Oh my god, for real? It has an X? Who has an X it for real? An X. Oh! That was genuine. <sighs> yep. God, I don't you. think we'll be seeing it again anytime soon. <sighs> Thank the gods, Is everyone says right? Mildred. Oh my gosh. I'm so happy I could kiss someone. Not you, though. She points to the guy she's playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The guy goes, Hey! I also take I pride can't... in my appearance! Not I for can't any find your mouth under your beard! Not for any kind of damage, but Khalil just smacks him. <laughs> you, uh, <laughs> jump back over the stairs, leap into the air, and just dope slap him, and then go back down <laughs> with, with, with the <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck was that? Valthiv. Oh boy. Um. God, is there anything I can do to help this ship? Um. Get something that will float off of it and then get on there. Do we have any? You could break off a couple chunks of wood, make a makeshift raft, uh. Something oh, just occurred to me. Well, the ship is in fact on fire, it's not sinking, and we have a cleric of the storm. Yes. That's just a thought. <laughs> is the other ship not sinking? Not actively. Uh, if you have a spell slot left that could, like, conjure up rain, then that could help put out the fire. Because apparently none of this is rain. Wait. Shut um. up. <laughs> um. Like, intensify the rain, I should say. That's fair. Shut up. <laughs> Wait. I'm a good to young guys, I swear. We <laughs> love you, Alex. I actually might have something for this. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> okay. Um, so... It doesn't look like this is going to cause any damage to anyone, so that's good. It's just going to get real cold real fast. That is okay. Alright. Exposed flames in the area are doused! Nice! Woo! <laughs> yep. Uh, you point ahead of the ship, once again invoke the power of the god of the storm, and rain just concentrates around there and... Boom! Pours down onto the ship. Uh, just like slowly covering it with freezing, freezing rain and dousing the flames on it. Yee. Yee. No more flames. No more flames. Unfortunately, no more flames. Lean, you are in the area effect, so you're gonna need to make a dexterity saving throw. Woo, I'm chilly. How many of us need to make a dex saving throw? Um, first time on their turn, so. Woohoo! A seven! Woohoo! <laughs> you fall over! I just fall over? <laughs> it's very yeah, slick! The ground, yeah. the ground is ice now. <laughs> the ground is ice and sleet. You take a step in to try and whack the guy and you just fall the fuck over. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. At this you point, I'm just like, team. to the guy, I'm just like, 
I feel like we're both not having very good days here. We haven't even hit each other once. Not, not especially, says the bandit, considering his options. <laughs> I fell over and now I'm upside down. Uh, well, this is my turn. I guess I can spend my move at getting back up. What yes, is you Lee can. wearing again? A skirt. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is not a good day for Lean. You stand back it. up with half your movement. <laughs> it's because the Kraken was involved. Yeah. This sucks. Um... Well, that, that was embarrassing. Uh, yeah, I think I'm just going to keep this up. I feel like we have something going here. Hey, there we go. All right. <laughs> uh, so, uh, the bandits, seeing where this is going, seeing men who took down a kraken spawn, men and women who took down a kraken spawn in their midst, and seeing that they have a sinking boat and they're charging their boat, see where the situation is going. Disengage and just dive off the side. <laughs> Taking their chances Bye. in the water instead. I, I was actually going to like you. <laughs> Wait, have you just given up with Pyra? No, I didn't mean like like. Ew. All right. Wow. I, I kick the body of this guy off of the boat. He was <laughs> ugly anyway. <laughs> All right. Mildred and Volth have dashed across the gangplank. As the boat you guys are on starts to upturn and sink, and you are left on the Kraken Priest <coughs> boat with your new friend who leans against the wall, panting heavily, and is like, Well, this was a terrible day. How about you guys? <sighs> Pretty average. On one hand, our boat has sank. On the other hand, I suppose we have a new one now. Filled with Even holes, but it, it sucks. Yeah, it really sucks. This hole you know is like what? as big it's, as me. It's keeping us afloat. I, I'll, I'll take what we have. Hey, the guard asked us to bring the stolen boats back. And never said anything <coughs> about the one we were sailing. All right, and as you uh, guys stop to chat, uh, he looks around, and says, "Well, it looks like we've uh, got a little time to kill. Might as well make a little like." conversation if that's okay with you. He turns and now that you are not in the middle of battle you see that there is a giant ass eye patch covering one of the guy's eyes as he stands showing off all the holes in his clothes. My name's Maxwell. It's nice to meet you all. Oh, hello Aww. Maxwell. Eye patch buddies. Eye patch buddies. And we're gonna take a break right here before we get into what is the deal with Maxwell. Well, first, can we acknowledge who did the artwork for this Yes. Character? This is Kristen Trusinski, Trimes Trusinski, doing the Yay, NPC Trimes artwork. Yay. Yay. Yay! We'll see you all in a couple of minutes once we get water and go to the bathroom. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. See you soon. Welcome back to the return of the Cannibal Conspiracy. When last we left off, our heroes stole a boat that was already stolen, and did somehow manage to free the hostage on board despite <laughs> blowing several holes in it. <coughs> yeah. It got better. Mm -hmm. It got better. It is covered in rain, slightly singed, but it's still technically sailing. It's fine. It's fine, It's not guys. the other ship. Mm -hmm. You should see the other guy. <laughs> oh my god, just fell popcorn all over my floor. Damn it! Oh no! There goes Uprising's popcorn. I hate myself so much. No, oh no. 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 Well, I'm just gonna eat floor popcorn during the stream now. <laughs> Sounds popcorn. like a plan. Um. Alright. So. Eventually, you get settled in, uh, have some seats on the deck, as Maxwell looks around and says, So, um, did you guys, like, have a plan going in, or were you just gonna blow up the ship, take it, and hope for the best? Not, 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 that, I, not that I have a problem with the results, of course, it's just, you know. Oh yeah, no, we had no plan. Okay. 
Okay. Great. <laughs> awesome. <clears throat> well, I guess it is still better than being passed around by cultists, so you count my lucky stars, I guess? Yeah, um... I mean, yeah, to be honest, I completely forgot, um... That we are supposed to be looking for a hostage, so. That's not very reassuring. Nah, I'm being honest. Uh, and I, nope. I guess, I guess I, I appreciate that. Uh, what, do you want us to lie? Uh, he says, waving a hand slightly. <laughs> Fair enough. Hmm. Still, like I said, uh... At least I am not being actively threatened or tied up, which is better than the last couple of cults I've been in, and it's definitely better than Destination would have been. Well, we can still tie you up if you want to. No, 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 please, no, I'm, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. I mean, no, no, um, how did You're you- You're lost. Get, how did you get to, into this anyways? Uh, yeah, I was, uh, I was on the run hopping from place to place, uh, then, uh, apparently, Cult of the Kraken is on good terms with the last cult I ran afoul of, so they were just gonna pick me up, along with a couple of, uh, well, I guess their bodies now, and drop me off back with the Cult of Zephira. I... I'm sorry, what was that last thing you said? Z Zephira? The Cult of Zephira? Yeah, I think you must be a time hopper, buddy, because, um, <laughs> we got rid of that. Yeah, kaput. Gone. I've got some really unfortunate news for you, then. Don't say it. <laughs> Don't even think about it. I... Oh, oh, okay. Um... After a bit Don't of even... silence... <laughs> Don't even tell me. <laughs> says, Please tell us. I'm, I'm getting a couple mixed messages here. Uh, but, I mean... See, um, there was a big ol' turmoil a uh, couple years back when the drow that were worshipping Zephira got, like, pretty much wiped out. So, a lot of the splinter cults decided it was... They didn't want to go through that again, just in case people were hunting them down, so they consolidated into one bigger cult. Ended up uh, dragging me with them. Took me a couple years, but I did manage to sneak away, and they want me back in. So how come you're involved in the first place, bud? You up in that cold stuff? Uh, let, let's just say that uh, when you grow up in the streets where people actively take food away from you, you don't have a lot of options. I kind of know That's fair. Means. Yeah. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, took me up all of five minutes to realize how fucked I was in the cult and several years after that to actually try and do something about it and in the meantime, well, I uh, didn't come out with all my parts intact. I can see that. <clears throat> yeah, thanks. Well, that sounds exciting. It, it sure so does, but... Sorry. Wait, wait, wait. But didn't you say, like, you guys wiped out the cult of Zephira? Oh, yeah. We actually defeated Zephira. Yup. It was great. Did you hear great. about that? His eye Khalil just starts. Great. Khalil starts fidgeting with a bar of soap. His eye widens. His mouth drops open. Holy shit! What? You uh, heard of us? What is it? No, no, no they. Uh, not like <clears throat> not specifically. They just say, oh, something bad happens. Let's not think about those people except if we're gonna kill them, and I'm not really the let's-go-kill-people type, so I was out of loop there, but, 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 if, if, if she, if she can be, if she can be stopped, that, that, that's great, we could, we, we could try again, we could, we could go, we could go over there, we could, we could stop the cult, and everything's gonna be fine, right? I mean, absolutely. Um, I mean, we need a little bit of time, and also some more details, uh, and right. also... I mean, right. ideally, like, a few more years, because we literally just did this, like, three years ago, and I'm still pretty busted from that, but, you know. Well, um, uh, details, I can certainly do my best to provide a time. I'm 
not entirely sure we have. Uh, anyway, uh, I I know at the very least where they are consolidating. Uh, it's a town called a uh, town called White Vane up in the Borul Mountains. Let me let me spell that out for you. White Vane. P-O-R-U-L-L-U-U-L. Has, has Kaleel heard of this at all? Make a history check. Is to, oh. I'm going to make one at the same time because Lane's a traveler. Cool. All right. Yeah. Walt no. is dumb and will probably <laughs> not do well with a history check. Uh, Kaleel... You have not been outside of your little corner of the forest very much. You don't really know anything <laughs> about White Vane. Uh, That's you've, fair. you've heard stories about White Vane. Uh, it was built on a mountain be- that used to be a veritable uh, treasure trove of raw silver to mine. Oh. Huh, I've heard of it. Never been, but... Huh. Well, uh, I'm sure that uh, taking a trip will be at least interesting in the sense that we'll have stuff to do that's not, you know, getting rid of a cult that's hunkered down somewhere in there. Yeah. Um, yeah, this sounds fun. Maybe we can buy some t-shirts. I, I, I guess. It just, gosh, I mean, are we really leaving so soon? I'm, I haven't exactly had time to prepare or, or, or say goodbye to my friend or... I, I, wow, this is so sudden. I mean, maybe we'll have, like, a night, but, you know, I think we are kind of dealing with a whole time issue here again. Yeah, um, because last I checked, they were, uh, they were pretty far along in some kind of ritual or another. Like, uh, I, I really don't want to be there when it goes down, but I also don't want to be somewhere else, if you know what I mean. Uh, of course. Uh, I'm... I'm sorry, I, I was being inconsiderate. Uh, I... No, I'm, I'm... I'm sorry, I know I know this is... This is a lot to ask you guys. You you didn't know any of, of this. You probably didn't... Definitely didn't want any of this. Uh, I mean, you, you've already done this once. If you, if you just want to go home, leave it for someone else, I, I totally get it. Yeah, but who's gonna do it? Nobody, that's who. I suppose exactly. we've done it once. I, I guess we could do it again. <laughs> Alright. Can Valtham just, like, make like, uh, a driftwood table and then flip it? Absolutely! <laughs> <laughs> flip over a table of driftwood! <laughs> oh, I thought we were done with it! Uh, yeah. Maxwell flinches at the table flip and goes, Sorry. It's not your fault unless you're the one leading the freaking ritual, my man. Yeah. Uh, no, 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 I'm not, not, no, def- definitely not doing that. Good, because we would probably have a very big problem otherwise. Okay, okay, yeah, do, dilly, dilly noted. You're probably going to want to be sticking with us, though, because um, if you're missing and uh, these guys want you, um, well, we're probably your your best bet. You probably don't want to just hide down some inn because that inn's guards is only it's it's barkeeper. <laughs> they're pretty cowardly. Okay, uh, good. Yeah, that good, guard didn't know. know what was up. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, he slowly nods. Uh, his eye widens again. Oh wait, wait, wait. Um, uh, I I think I remember something. Uh, the 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 captain the. Guy with the with the he puts his arms under his chin and wiggles his fingers with with this with this thing, uh, the, yeah, the beard? yeah, yeah. yeah I think yeah. I think he had a teleport rune in the captain's quarters. Uh, if it's still there, I could I could try to read it, see if that gets us closer to white white vein than uh, than sailing would. Oh, that sounds fun. Uh, as he, he says this, Nildra coughs. In that case, you all should probably go on without me. Uh, someone's gotta make sure this ship isn't just floating out in the middle of the water. And she looks over at the floating corpse of the Kraken spawn. My adventuring days just came to a nice end. 
Did that really just hurt you that bad? She nods once. Jeez. Wow. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, my books are balanced now, at least. Yeah. You know, well, you can also take the, the ship back. I mean, we won't get a very hefty reward, but... But we'll get something, and that, I suppose, does count. Yeah. Living off some other idiot's retirement fund does sound nice. Mm-hmm. Heck okay. yeah. We should really thank you for everything. If you weren't there during our the first battle, we certainly wouldn't still be standing here. I'd say the same to you. And while I'm at it, she turns over, uh, grasps your shoulder, Kaleo. Kick her ass again for me, huh? <laughs> of course. Uh, and as, uh, as she talks and Maxwell goes into the captain's quarters, he says, Um, slight issue, I think a little bit of the rune got, uh, washed away. What do you mean, washed away? It's like, um, you, you wanna, you wanna come look at this? Okay. I can, but I can't guarantee I can do anything about it. Uh, you step into the captain's quarters, and inside there looks like there was a teleport rune painted against the wall, but a bunch of, uh, slick rain leaked in through a hole in it and washed away most of the rune. Oh, no. Uh, shoot, oh. says Max. Would you rather the ship be still be on fire? I mean, I do enjoy not being on fire. Well, How there's long could it possibly that. Take to sail there. Couple of days. Uh, I could try to like recreate it. He says. Uh, give me one second. I might have some. Uh, in the meantime, now that we're in, like, the captain's quarters, can I, like, look around for goodies? Absolutely. Yay! Um, let's see. Oh, that be, uh, uh, um... Investigation check with advantage, because it's a ship you know where people usually keep their shit. Oh, good. Uh, this is all natural terrain, right? You're on Why? a boat! <laughs> I'm on a boat! <laughs> Why? Why? Why is it... Why is this an intelligence... It doesn't take intelligence to look for stuff. It does to thoroughly search stuff. Does it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, this, water counts as just natural terrain, right? It would. A couple of days is not too bad. I am not going to let you use Secrets of Nature to walk across the fucking ocean. Eh, that's fair. That's <laughs> fair. <laughs> What's that? Water walk? Oh, no. no. <laughs> uh, both of you take a quick look around. It doesn't look like the Kraken Priest stashed any notable treasure in here. So instead you just take random bits and knickknacks that he had hanging around in the captain's quarters instead. Good. I just take things out of spite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Natural explorer, which means at least we could just travel uh, and not become lost, except by natural magical means. And difficult terrain wouldn't slow us down. That could work, I guess. I don't fucking know. Not when you're sailing, my dude. Oh. oh, well. Uh, was, like, anyone have any objections to me, like, trying this, or are we are we sailing? I think you should just try it. Okay. I mean, go for it. All right. Uh, Maxwell starts rummaging through the desks alongside Valthiv, finds uh, a bottle of ink and a brush, dips it in, and starts drawing as best he can what he remembers the teleport rune looking like. Okay. Af yeah. After about 30 minutes, he says, Okay, I think that's got it. Uh, 
You guys might want to stand close. I'm pretty sure that if you don't, you might be left here. Khalil gives one last hug to... Wow, I'm blanking out on names. Uh, what's her name? Mildred. Mildred, thank you. Give us one last uh, quick hug to Mildred before... Rune. Okay. And I'm assuming Valtham and Lean also stand yeah. close. Yep. yep. All right. Uh, Mildred gives a quick wave and says, Good luck out there, as Maxwell chants some arcane words. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, oh, dear. Um, Why, oh, dear. Teleport requires a percentile roll to see how accurate you are. <laughs> yeah, I, I know that part, but what does 35 mean? That's 35%. 35 it's not a very good percent. That's not a very good percent. Uh, Okay, so, uh, oh. as you chance, the rune starts glowing, all of you start glowing, and then, with a <laughs> you disappear from the boat, and appear in this dark, uh, dark wilderness, like, rocky terrain below and trees surrounding you, and unfortunately, you notice about this wilderness, you're a good 20 feet up in the air. <laughs> Whoa! Ah, and whoa. immediately you fall and tumble down with ow, 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 ow. Ow. Well, for a. Oh. Ah, guys. I think I might have misjudged the room. Really? <clears throat> you think? Do you look at you that? Yeah. I'm just gonna move you guys to the spooky hidden layer real quick so we can appreciate Kylie Ann's background art. Thank you, Kylie Ann. Thank you, Kylie Ann. Oh god, are we in Slender? Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, you stand up, get your bearings, and uh, look around. Along with all the trees that are surrounding the area, you see a couple of winding mountain paths just barely through the edge of a thick fog, and you look up uh -oh. into the sky. You're back, by the way. Congratulations. Someone's not supposed to be there, though. Shh. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. Nothing ever goes wrong. Mm hmm. And you look up to get a better sense of direction. You can see that there are more paths that wind up a long mountain trail, but the sky is just like completely covered by this thick layer of fog. Did Vault have cast fog cloud again? <laughs> Why well, are you always gonna blame me for stuff? <laughs> Why are you always blaming Vault? <laughs> Because it's usually you! And what if I did? Then I'll be confused because we just got here. Where is here? Um I have no idea. Maxwell looks around. Well, um the good news is I think this is still the greater white vein area. The bad news is we are hoofing it from here. How far? Uh, he looks around. I have no idea. I do know that generally you'd want to go up if you're looking for the city. Um, is there any moss growing on any of the trees? Uh, there's a little bit, yeah. Could Kaleo try and use that to figure out which, uh, where civilization is closest to? Sure, Absolutely. Uh, Make a nature survival? check. Nature, all right. Nature. Oh, oh yeah. Like, uh, you look at the moss, you look at basically everything that you can get a clear view of Kaleil, while everyone else is just kind of taking their best guesses with either their one good eye or lean not having your vantage point of being not two foot two feet tall. Mm -hmm. You have spent all your life in the freaking woods. You can see trails, and you know exactly what trail to go up. 
if you want to get to the city of White Vane. Moss grows on the north side. We need to go that way. You're sure about this? Absolutely. I I know nature better than anyone here. Well, he's right about that. that. Uh, out of, yeah. I'll trust you on that one. Let's go. All right. You follow Kaleel as he pushes through the trees and off to a much clearer trail. This one is, like, covered in, like, loose rocks and dirt and gravel and goes up some pretty steep hillsides into colder mountain terrain. As you walk, however, you hear the distant sound of howling wolves. Uh-uh, I do not want to deal with wolves right now. Oops, I just dragged my token on the <laughs> Oops, there's <laughs> Lynn! Right. Yeah, right. How did I even do that? It looks so much like you. Oh, well, um, I, I didn't know you also had this stuff happened to you, Six <laughs> Max. Oh. <Yeah>. Huh. <laughs> wow, things are really... Th- Today's weird. Yeah. yeah. Okay, but like, I would rather deal with wolves than a kraken spawn. I mean, absolutely. But right now, I don't want to deal with anything. I mean, yep. if, we, if we keep going really fast maybe they won't we won't run into them maybe <laughs> um if we keep moving at a natural pace i ho- hopefully they won't hopefully they won't bother us too much i have a good idea maybe if i play some really shitty violin sounds they'll be scared by them because of the high frequency and go away i think that will aggra- well they won't want to come close because then i'll just be louder is this a good idea? Make a nature yes, check. <laughs> well, okay. Um, considering that Lean is a bard and channels magic through music, it's probably not a terrible idea. And you're sure this will work? No. Am I ever sure? There Are any of us sure time. of anything ever? Well, Kaleel just was. Yeah, but Kaleel is also a good lad. Shoot, it's not anything special. Um, <clears throat> if you're willing to give it a shot, then I suppose it's worth something. Cool. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna play some just, just stuff you just don't like. You just don't like hearing it. Nice. Nice. Oh, nice. oh no. I guess it's really good then. <laughs> you play some sick licks on your violin as you try to make them sick in the bad way, but they're sick in the good way. <laughs> what kind of effect oh, does it have if you're trying to play bad music, but then you roll a natural one? <laughs> God damn it. I'm trying to make terrible violin sounds, but I just... Oh. Uh-huh. Beautiful yeah. music keeps coming out. It sounds a lot like what you played when we first met, music. actually. I mean, there are there are weirder ways to say that you have talent, but okay. I listen. This is I don't. I, I honestly, <laughs> this is not what I wanted to do. All right. Uh, well, that's what you did. You continue playing the song for a little bit. And the wolf noises uh, get a little louder at first, and then get quiet. Oh, they're stalking us now. It'll be fine, just to hear what's about you. Yeah, I'm gonna keep playing. Alright, you keep playing the violin as you get to a very, very windy part of this mountain path. Uh... Luckily, it looks like there are rocky stairs carved into the mountainside to assist climbing some very steep slopes. Oh. Well, that's convenient. Yeah. That's a good sign. Must be, a, must be getting pretty close. I suppose so. Alright. Should we wait? Hmm. 
Does it look more man-made than... You, you said it was carved, right? So... Yes. Hmm. I'd like to roll perception on this. Okay. You take a good, hard look at the stairs. They look to have been naturally carved out quite some time ago, like a good hundred or so years if at the earliest, latest rather, possibly even older. Is it possible that there may be some wear and tear then? Uh, yes, it does look like these are fairly well-traveled stairs. If we're going to climb up these, we want to be very careful. I don't know why, but I feel like I feel like these might be a little worse for wear. Hold on, let me let me better phrase it. Um, there's a very steep mountainside. These are carved downward into it. So basically, this is part of the rock face. It is very sturdy looking because it is part of the giant ass hill and mountain you're climbing up. So in other words, it's perfectly safe. Cla you do not believe that the stone stairs will break and drop you. At the most, like, you might knock over a couple of pebbles. I'll find a way to Your Honor, I'd like stairs. to retract my previous statement. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Shall we get going? Uh, yeah, I'm already climbing go. up them. Yep, Lean's already going up, playing the violin. Whoa, wait up! All right. I can't hear you over my music. That's supposed to be bad. Oh. You're thinking too much, Kaleo. Hmm? Oh. You uh, climb up one set of stairs, turn a corner, and climb up another to get where it winds and turns a corner again. And as you do so, you hear a growl. And ahead of you, Lean, is standing a big old bulky black wolf. And as the rest of you climb the stairs, you hear a similar growl from behind you. And there's another bulky black wolf. And then you hear one up above you, look up, and there's an even bigger looking wolf, this one with patches of gray in its fur, with a giant <laughs> curved sword in its mouth. Oh That's my gosh! Horrible. It's name from game series. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's reference. <laughs> Amazing you, subject name here, must be the pride of subject hometown here. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. The wolves uh, slowly uh, clamber over some rocks and uh, crawl towards you, and stop. <laughs> just, just just stop? Yeah, they are stopping and staring at you. Hey, Kalea, what do wolves hate? Alex. Make a nature, nature. check. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Mr. I live in the woods. You <laughs> live in the woods. <laughs> Uh, generally, wolves hate it when you're in their territory, but that's definitely not what Lean was asking. Uh, you don't think wolves in general have any particular weaknesses? <laughs> like, they're not going to be like, if you set them on fire, they explode or something like that. <laughs> oh my god. But you do take a look at these wolves, and you realize that wolves will only stop like this before attacking, if they either want you to get the fuck out and are giving you a chance to leave, or are planning something. Can I offer them food? Do you have food? I don't know, I have some rations. Yeah, that counts. Yeah, I also have some. Alright. I uh, bribe the wolves. <laughs> I also you... have water. You pull out some rations from uh, your pouch, Volthiv, and the wolf with the sword standing up top has a glint in its eye, turning to you. Uh, then uh, looks over at the wolf on the right, barks, somehow keeping the sword in its mouth, 
and the rightmost wolf clambers over, shoulder checks Maxwell out of the way. Oh. Wow. <laughs> and bites down on the pack of rations. Okay. Yeah. Aww. The wolf Hungry boy. then backs away, looks up at the higher ledge, coils back and leaps up, dropping them in front of the sword wolf. Hmm. Yeah? Do you guys like it? <laughs> uh, the, the wolves continue staring at you. <laughs> yeah. They don't know if they like it yet. They haven't tried it. Um, I'm trying to think of what to do here. I doubt this is going to work, but I'm going to try it. <clears throat> Kaleo is going to get on one knee, just to sort of show some kind of sign of respect. Mm. Or submission. Basically. Yep. Lay on your back. <laughs> lay on your back. Do you guys want to all lay on our backs? No. I think we should. Not particularly. I take nap right here. <laughs> okay. No, I don't moments. actually take a nap right here. So all, all, who all is kneeling and or laying on your back? If we show them uh, me, we don't I guess. do any harm, maybe we can pass through. Okay. Yeah, that's what laying on your back is, idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Can't hear you. On my back. <laughs> exactly. On my back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so, as you take a knee or go onto your back, the sword wolf barks again. The other two wolves come close, start sniffing. Start sniffing around the pouches. Uh, and uh, one of them tries to bite and rip Kaleo's pouch away. Eats your stuff, Kaleo. Gotta <sighs> give it up. Kaleo loosens his pouch from his, from his person. All right. Uh, the wolf uh, takes the pouch, puts it in his mouth, feels the distinct taste of soap in there, and spits it out. <laughs> <laughs> Ten bars, to be specific. Ten whole bars of soap come pouring Ten out of the pouch. Uh, the wolf stares up at the one with the sword, growls. The one with the sword growls, and the wolf down below bows. The wolf with the sword looks down, growls again, and Kaleel, you swear you can hear it say, Where's the rest? The rest? The food. I, I... I don't think we have any other food on us. I have food! You do? Yeah, I actually do. Well, why don't you offer it to them? Well, yeah, I can if I... Hold on. Mm. Uh, Give it. She's, she sits up for a second and takes out... Um, how many wolves are there here? There's four. There's four. So she, four. she gets out three of her five rations. All right. Uh, the wolves... First wolf that jumped up jumps down to get one of the packs. They all take rations in hand, leap up, drop them on the ground. Sword wolf uh, temporarily drops the sword, leans down, and starts chowing down on the first pack of rations. Okay. Kaleel is just... I, I, I don't want to say that he's afraid, but he definitely has like a slight bead of sweat just on, like, going down his cheek. Just really hoping that this works. I can't believe you're being shaken down from wolves. <laughs> mm -hmm. You learn to respect nature, okay? All right. uh, the wolf finishes the pack of rations, smacks its chops, and then you swear you hear its mouth open and it say, Tastes like shit. It's all we have. Yeah. Oh, I think so too, but yeah. it's all we got. Yeah. The, the wolf leans down, stares, sniffs at you. Mm. 
We do what we have to to survive. I don't believe you. What else can we do to help to make you believe us? You smell like more food. I mean, I have more food, but it's the same food. I mean, it tastes like shit, but we'll take it if it's enough. Uh, yeah, I could give, like, each of you one more, if you need it. <laughs> you smell like more than that. Excuse me? You smell like more than that, says the wolf, uh, biting down on the sword and growling. Oh no. So you got some options. You drop your food, or you're the food. Well, Siv, I think you should just give them what we have. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm not used to push to talk. Sorry. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, I guess you can have it if you want all of our shit food. All right. Does everyone drop their rations? Yep. We can always get more food. It, plus, yeah. out of character speaking, we can always just get more food in the town. So, yeah, this is nothing. All right. Yeah. Uh, Maxwell rifles through his pockets and drops his one ration. You can swear you see the wolf with the sword roll its eyes. But he shrugs. <laughs> <laughs> the wolves, uh, jump down, start picking up the food, jumping back up, putting it into a pile. Hmm. More than I thought in here. You rich, strangers? No. But we do travel a little bit. Relatively <sighs> speaking, sir. Sir! Laughs the... Laughs the wolf. <sighs> nah, it's cool. I get it. I get it. Can't tell with a wolf, right? I, I suppose. Alright. What I'm... should we call you, then, if, if, it, if you don't mind me asking? Ah... Uh. If you're ever uh, unlucky enough to run into me again, name's Paratha. Thank you, Paratha. And thank you for the dinner. Let's hope next time we meet, uh, you either got better shit, or you've decided to taste good. Eh, I don't think I'm ever gonna taste good. Alright. Of course. And, uh, as she says this, he looks over at the pile of food, nods, uh, turns to one of the wolves and barks. The wolf nods, runs off. A couple minutes later, runs back with, let me double check something real quick. Please let be puppies. Uh, a, puppies? a fur-rimmed black jacket and some, uh, some leather pants. Along with a little bit of uh, thick gauze wrap, uh, Paratha nods. The wolf bows down. She looks over. Much as I'm sure you'd love to see how awesome my tits are, I don't exactly like to get naked in front of strangers, so... Oh, I completely understand. Alright. I was just, I, I'm just picturing everyone slowly <laughs> turning their head to lean. <laughs> <laughs> Simultaneously, Lean like, mm. Mm. has slight disappointment in her face. <laughs> All right, uh, the wolves gather around, kind of making a privacy screen for Paratha. As you hear the cracking of bones, as her paws start slowly morphing into arms and feet, and uh, they dart out, grab the clothes, and start putting them on. As she stands up and starts uh, grabbing the rations and putting them into a pack. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. Y'all are good to go, by the way, in case you uh, 
in case you wanted to do something other than staring at all this, she says, flexing. And as you does, you can see that despite the fact that the bandage wrap is covering her, uh, her bosom, she is not wearing a shirt. And she is jacked. Oh my oh, god. Oh yeah, no. I mean, Hello? we can leave, but, uh, I mean, now I'm interested. <laughs> huh. uh, she looks down at you. It's like, well, gotta say I get that a lot, but uh, not usually from someone so charming. <laughs> You're too oh. kind. Uh, thank you for, thank you for letting us pass, Paratha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good luck in the city, Yara. <laughs> You're probably gonna need it. Of course. Oh, please, I've dealt with city slums worse than this. I make money off of them. Two seconds when I get out, bam, done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, have fun with that, she says. And then she uh, barks out, We're out, boys! And uh, the wolves bound off, Paratha dashing off with them, great sword in hand. Bye. Wow. I like her. Yeah, well... That's nature for you, I think. Nature? <laughs> I don't know about nature, but, uh... Hooey zooey mama. Yeah, I, uh, I gotta right. say, that, uh, that was, that was impressive. Yeah. Who that, do I wonder? We gotta get moving. I'm gonna be here all day. All right. You continue along the trail, and uh, you cr you cross over more and more winding paths, getting clearer and clearer of the forest, until you arrive before uh, a very, very big city wall, basically. Huge iron gate decorated with silver trim and a couple of watchtowers on the side of it uh, surround a... Large city carved into a mountain peak. You can peer a little bit over the wall and see that the buildings are made of stone and just continue to go up, reaching further and further into the sky, which is still covered with this layer of fog and clouds. Uh, you continue to look around in front of the gate. Looks like it is built on a relatively grassy patch in that there is grass around, and not just, uh, you know, rock, dirt, and the like. Mm -hmm. And uh, you continue to look around, and you see there's a little bit of movement in a watchtower. A humanoid <coughs> figure who looks to be peering down at you. Uh, does he have any... Okay, first of all, he, she... Uh, hard to tell from a distance. Looks to be a he. So I guess from a distance, I guess it wouldn't be able to tell uh, what kind of expression they had. Like, do they... Do Make they a perception see... check. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Watch as I... Ro oh, okay. Uh, well, there you go. He looks kind of curious, honestly. Uh, hello? Um, we're, we're just trying to get entrance into the city. Hail and well met, Traveler! Ho there! Though I have to say, honestly, you lot would be the Travelers. Uh, not a lot coming into White Vane these days, especially not, uh, not lizard folk. I get Sucks. that a lot. That said, uh, if you are looking for entry, do you have your medical cards with you? Medical cards? I, what? What is that? No one gets into the city without a cleared medical card, I'm afraid. Uh, I don't have a medical card, but, um... Well, I know I'm clean, if you're talking about the ones that travel from stinky stuff. I don't know. About, but where would we be able to get yeah. one of these? Yeah. Uh, he, he points, and you can vaguely see the direction he's pointing. 
Go around the east wall, turn the corner, get to the medical camp. Uh, one of the physicians there will check on you. Well, that sounds fun. Thanks. At least we don't have to travel like five million miles to get one. Oh god, yeah, that would be awful. Wait, do we have to pay? Um... You shouldn't, unless you want to, like, be expedited. Don't think there's much of a line now, though. Like I said, not very many travelers. Alright, well, that's all good with me, then. Uh, that sounds, uh, sounds reasonable, says Maxwell, slowly nodding. You, uh... Alright, guys, let's, let's head out to get our doctor's appointments. This is fun. This is engaging. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't mean, if, if you're not clean, I still have my my soap if you need it i have like 10 bars of these cool yeah <laughs> and um i think we need to have oh god i think we need to have a talk about how much soap actually does i i'm not sure i understand but okay <sighs> maybe later though okay oh god if you insist okay uh Maxwell just slowly chuckles, covers his mouth. Sorry, sorry. I know there, there's a story, but uh, but yeah, yeah. We can we can wait. We can wait. It's fine. Uh, you uh, walk around the eastern wall of the uh, well, the wall obviously surrounding White Vane, and eventually get to a series of tents that have been pitched in a grassy field. You can hear the buzzing of flies and the coughing of several people from within the tents. And there are a couple of uh, thin humans, mostly mostly blonde women, uh, feverishly running back and forth with uh, buckets and other medical supplies ducking in between tents. Oh wow! Looks like these people aren't feeling very good. No, 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 no! Don't don't leave me behind in this. What do you mean it doesn't actually make things disappear? Uh, okay, no, no, we'll tell you later. <sighs> All right, where are we? Uh, looks like camp, says Maxwell. Should we, uh, should we ask someone? Yeah, the least busy person we can find, probably. If we can find someone who's not running around. <coughs> All right, uh, that would be an investigation check to see who looks the least busy. Oh, boy. Hmm. Investigation. Yeah. Yeah. Investigation, you say. Investigation, I say. Investigation. Okay. I just realized that. Okay. Okay. Um. Uh. All right. With the three of you putting your heads together, Maxwell offers, but you get the sense that he doesn't see very well because of the eye patch. Oh, poor guy. Uh. You eventually look and see that there is. <laughs> One woman stepping out of a tent, washing her hands, who does not look to be in a particular hurry. Hang on, guys. She's... I, I got this. Um, I mage hand, uh, poke her on the shoulder, and then, like, points towards us, and then I wave and say, Yoo-hoo! Uh, she is startled, but uh, looks over once she sees the floating hand. Uh, sees, uh, sees you waving and is like, oh, uh, hello there. Uh, honestly, wasn't expecting travelers at this late hour, especially ones that, uh, you know, uh, conjure up little bits of magic. Uh, c come on, come over here, come over here. Uh, mind where you step. Um, I think people still need to clean up the vomit. <laughs> oh, oh, this is just like my Saturday nights. Ah, excellent. Uh, good to hear that. Uh, nothing here's gonna shock you then. Uh, welcome, welcome. Uh, my name is Elin, by the way. I am one of the people who's here uh, running the camp. Uh, I assume you're here because uh, you want to get into White Vane? Yep. That will be the case. Yep. Ah, excellent, excellent. Uh, in that case, we just need to do uh, a couple of quick checkups, make sure that you are generally healthy, don't have anything infectious. Uh, we're, uh, we're busy dealing with a little bit of an outbreak, so uh, we, we have to be a little more careful these days. Outbreak Understandable. Boy. Outbreak of what, by the way? Uh, yes, uh, outbreak of, uh, they call it the Red Rot. Oh, that sounds bad. It really does. Um, it involves a lot of hemorrhaging. Like, a lot. 
Hemera what? Everywhere? Everywhere. That sounds really bad. It really is. Uh, and it's also highly infectious. Anyone who comes into contact. Uh, yeah, uh, so let's just say that uh, we've done our best to get it out of the city. And while there may still be a few hidden cases here and there, none that have popped up and none that we want to pop up. Mm-hmm. Well... Uh, Anyway, come in, come in. I believe there's a spare tent over there, she says, pointing. Uh, should take about 15 minutes for each of you. <coughs> sure. Okay. All right. Uh, you pile into a very cramped tent with a cot that is very clearly meant for one person to sit on. As Elin uh, takes out some medical instruments uh, and starts looking over people, checking their reflexes, uh, peering into their eyes... Uh, no aches and pains, no signs of coughing, anything like that? No. Oh, I see. Mm, no, uh, surprisingly very good. No, uh, no bite wounds or anything on the way here? She says, uh, looking up and looking back and forth. Bite wounds, no. Nah. Ah, good, good. We've, uh, we've been having a little bit of a problem with the wolf population lately, and, uh, well, let's just say... Some of the wolves are not supposed to be in the city, and yet they get in anyhow. Huh. And she continues to run checkups, making a mild conversation about why you're here visiting White Vane. Uh, Maxwell is letting you take the lead so he doesn't blurt out, We're hunting for the cannibal god! <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Got to say, um... Don't get a lot of travelers here anymore. Uh, what exactly is your interest here? Oh, well, I'm I'm a traveling bard, so I want to... It's part of my goal to visit, like, every single big place, although it seems like I picked kind of a bad time for this one, huh? Uh, well, I don't like to say it, but, yeah, Whitefane used to be uh, a whole lot bigger than, uh... Well, everything started happening at once, honestly. <coughs> Yeah? Like what? Oh, um, I'm afraid I don't know all the details. You'd have to ask uh, the mayor about that, or if you don't fancy your chances getting an appointment, uh, you could always ask around at the inn. Uh, Total gossip running it. Uh, But, uh, along with the plague, there have been, uh, you know, the wolves and the the mages getting uppity, and all that sort of thing. Oh, mages are always uppity. Hey, says Maxwell. <laughs> well, it's true. You, you, that was very uppity of you. Fair. <laughs> All right. And, uh... Are going to say the reason for all this? Yeah. Are you just all going to go with uh, traveling to see the sights? What? I just like to travel and see what I can see, <laughs> try and discover, maybe, like, you know find some new stuff. Alright. Ah, oh, fair, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, well, uh, I would say that uh, White Vane is a pretty good place to see new stuff. So, welcome, and hope you enjoy your stay, while however long it lasts. She spends a little bit longer than usual checking the eyesight of Valthiv and Maxwell, but there doesn't seem to be anything off about that, so she doesn't hold you up for too long. <laughs> and fair. After about an hour of checkups, she says, All right, you look all clear. Just uh, let me stamp these, she says, opening a drawer, pulling out some uh, sheets of paperwork, and putting a green stamp mark on all of them, passing them out. You're going to want to keep these on you. These will allow you to travel in and out of the city. <coughs> What's the Wonderful. item to put in my inventory? Yay! Yay! <laughs> Alex, what do I call this new item to put in my inventory? You can call it a medical card, you can call it a pass into White Vane, you can call it whatever. It is just what's gonna let you in. Medical card it is. Hooray! Hooray! <coughs> I say as I start coughing. <laughs> oh, Sounds no. like he should be reprimanded. He's got the black lung. <laughs> uh, do you want me to run some tests on that? Asks Elon. <laughs> 
Oh. You should probably just strip him down and check his chest. That'll probably be enough. I, I, excuse me. Oh, <laughs> uh, good idea, says Elon. <laughs> <laughs> One half hour later. <laughs> One half hour later. Hmm. Well, it seems to be a very strange case. Like, I'm hearing coughing, but not from you, and yet it sounds a lot like you. I think that's out of my area of expertise, honestly. It, it, not an issue. Please don't do that again. It's fine, it's fine. I've seen worse. I've seen a lot I worse. I think you should go shirtless more often, Kaleo. You, you, you think so? Yeah. Mm. Shirtless Kaleo time, what? <laughs> oh. It happened once already. Well, not really. I guess not. Really. not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, we've already had the the female shirtlessness. We needed the balance. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure Valtha was shirtless at one point. Probably. Maybe. It's been so long. It wasn't in Cannibal Conspiracy, though. I think that was way back. The tomb of Epic Oh, oh uh, no. the 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 cursed campaign. <laughs> Ah, oh, yes, yes, yes. Which one is more cursed, that or Hergelbergle? <laughs> Hergelbergle's not a campaign. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Side sessions are campaigns, technically. No, they're one-shots. <laughs> uh, anyway. Well, uh, you all should be in the clear. Uh, just hold these up and you should be into White Vein. She looks up at the sky. And I'm pretty sure it's night, so that's good timing on your parts. Uh, hard to tell these days. Yeah, it sure is dreary here. Uh, do not expect a whole lot of uh, variation in the weather <coughs> around here. Oh, uh, by the way, um, yes? do you have a an inn you like? Like, uh, where should we go? Ah, uh, well, uh, the best and, quite frankly, only operating inn would be in the slums district, unfortunately, but don't let that put you off. It's uh, very high quality. It's the Lively Moon Tavern. That's quite the nice name, actually. Oh, well, uh, it is a, quite a lovely place. Very, uh, very fancy offerings, you know, considering. Uh, and I'm sure, uh, I'm sure you'll get a pretty good rate being travelers and all. Oh, yeah. Kaleo's legs start to shake just a tad, and he asks, By just a strange question, how elevated is the tavern? Um... Well, uh, as you can see, White Vane is on a mountaintop. We don't have a lot of room to build out, so we built up. That works for me. Thank you. All right. Uh, uh, happy travels and welcome to White Vane, she says, waving you off. Yeah, Thank you. Thanks for the cards. Thank you. All right. So we, we go back to the guy and we flash our papers. Ah, and well, like, can we go in now? Really, ah. you you flash the papers. That's that's the only thing you want to flash. Yeah, you uh, Not, you flash the papers. He that charming. Uh, he looks down, <laughs> sees the green mark. Ah, well, that'll do. Come on in, he says, uh, walking away. And then you hear a clank, 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 clank as the iron gate into White Vein opens up. Yay! By the way, sir, is it nighttime? It's so dark here. Um. Kind of hard to tell these days. Yeah, I mean, we literally just heard that same, like, the same line. Is it? <laughs> um, the answer is, uh, oh, shit, how long have I been on duty? I, I feel like that's an important thing to keep track of. So do I. So do I. Uh, well, I mean, if you have been traveling for quite some time, you should, uh, probably go find a place to stay, unless you've got, like, an urgent appointment you'd rather do instead. Nope. All right. All right, well, whatever. I don't have to know the time. That's fine. Uh, see ya. It's cool. just up on the, on the top of that mountain, right? Uh, no, that would be Daunton Keep. Uh, what you're looking for is the slums district. That would be, he points in the direction, towards the, uh, the lower end of White Vane. Kaleo looks disappointed. Oh. Okay. Kaleo, 
slums aren't usually at the highest point of the freaking town. Sorry let's, to uh, take it to you this way. Let's show off some more awesome uh, Kylie Ann art. Yay. Yay! 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 It is stacking. We stack the buildings. <laughs> Stick. Stick. As long as I get top bunk. That's fine. I just don't want bottoms. I'll have your bottom bunk. Ah. If there's not bunks, or if there's only two beds, I sleep on your chest. Fair enough. Alright. You, uh... You head through and walk into the slums, uh, and you can see that there is absolutely no signs of maintenance in here. This particular part of the city is dilapidated as fuck. Uh, oh. <laughs> you even pass through a few uh, gatehouses that do not seem to have any guards currently in them. So you get the sense that this is a much lower security part of town than uh, than the rest of White Vane. There are, however, plenty of stacked houses very close together and very much on top of each other. And... Pretty much impossible to miss among all of them is a very tall building with the painted sign of a moon on the front. A smiling moon. That looks like the inn. The Lively Moon Tavern. Gosh. Wow. Wow. Let's bust in. No. No, let's not. Well, they weren't let's... kidding when they said this was a slum. Yep. Uh... You pass by a couple of people who are coughing in the street. This is 100% a slum and also a very, very terrible part of town. And yet when you walk into the inn itself, it is much nicer. Like, there is silverware decked out on the tables. There are tablecloths everywhere. There are a couple people who are hanging out and chatting. Uh, it doesn't look particularly active, but it looks very, very clean. Uh, and as you so go... Is it fair... Sorry, go Sorry. ahead. No, 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 I was just going to say, so is it fair to say that at the very least they're more middle class, if not higher, upper crust or something like that? Um, this is very well maintained furniture and silverware, like exceptionally well. If you didn't have a look outside, you would swear this was the aristocratic end of town. <laughs> So this is definitely for the upper crust, or at the very least, just high class. Uh, kinda, sorta. There are several people in various outfits in here, most of which don't look particularly well kept. Some do, mm. but most do not. I'm just setting up the map real quick so you get a decent idea of what the inside of the Lively Moon looks like. Maps, I see. I have my violin out because when Lean goes into an inn, she's always ready to perform. Mm -hmm. Doesn't even matter if it was a gig or not. Absolutely. <laughs> she's just there playing her freaking heart out. Uh, Alright. Uh, you uh, walk inside, see a couple of people at tables who I am far too lazy to put down tokens for because they are not important to this map. Oh. Yeah. And you see that uh, there is a set of winding stairs going up, presumably towards the rooms. This is a this is a very tall building. You'd say three, maybe four stories. And off towards the corner by the bar, polishing some glasses, is a young woman in a fancy serving uniform with little. Uh... Let me double check her art because wait, yeah, there's more art. With a very Yay! tiny, with a very tiny bow around her neck, a uh, black vest and apron, and uh, short blonde hair, uh, with a couple of bangs covering one eye. She is currently pretty busy polishing glasses. I can't even see her full art, and yet I'm in love. Just saying. Anyways, I see. is anyone else reminded of how Simmons from this? I'm mostly just reminded of how freaking badly I want to perform right now. I'm gonna go talk to this person washing dishes. Because we need a room. That's that's true. Alright. Hey! 
Oh. Uh, you walk over, uh, say hey. She looks up, gives a quick nod, looks back, does a triple take, gasps. New people! Hi! Hi! Welcome, 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 welcome! Uh, this is the Life of Moon Tavern. Uh, please have a seat, have a seat. There's a, there's a table right over here that looks open. Uh, you need anything? Uh, room. Oh, is yeah, room, room, room. Yeah, we've got, uh, we've got plenty of those. Uh, not very, not very booked. Mostly it's residents in here. Uh, it would be, uh, three gold a night per person for a room. Uh, you could get, uh, ten gold per night if you want one of the premium rooms. Those are the ones up top. Uh-huh. Fancy. I don't have the money for that, I think. Uh. Oh, it, tip of advice. You probably shouldn't tell people that you're not getting very much business. Um, it, look, I'm, I'm trying to be very honest here. Uh, and honestly, we have not gotten travelers into White Vein for a while. I, I'm getting, I, I know, I know. I'm just like, I'm telling you. As, as for not getting enough business, well, that's not, not especially true. I mean, people, people do come here for the food. It's, uh, it's some of the, some of the best in town, if I, if I dare brag about myself for a little bit. <laughs> I'm sure it's great. Right now we're just tired. And as you can see, I still have part of an arrow sticking out of my chest which I'm surprised she didn't acknowledge at the medical checkup. <laughs> I would assume you tore that sh I would assume you took that shit out. I didn't take it out. That makes it worse. <laughs> okay, in that case, I am going to say that Elon has enough medical knowledge on how to safely treat a wound like that and make sure it's not infected, which it wasn't. As as you can see here, I've recently gotten an arrow taken out of my chest. Um, so uh, dare I ask? Uh, no. Okay. 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 Uh, well, actually, you can. We it was a long I'm actually, day. I'm proud proud of this one. We did just kill a kraken. Oh, so uh, well, congrat congratulations! I didn't realize we had some adventures in the mist. That's uh, that's that's really impressive. Yeah, no, uh, you know, that's great. I mean, you might, have, you might have heard of us from, you know, three years. You know, never mind, I'm not going to answer it. Ixnay. Ixnay. No, I just get really excited. Anyway, yeah, three rooms. Uh, hold on. We got four people here. We get three gold each. Uh, well, do we want to share? Is it one bed per room? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, uh, <coughs> then that's 12 gold. All right, I'll pay for it. Lean, uh, I mean, Khalil has no knowledge of how currency works, so when he hears 12 gold, he just gives 12 gold. Oh, oh okay, you could, you cover it then. All right, Mr. Gentleman. Cover what? Cool. Uh, that I'm that works. Let you uh, do it. That's that's gonna cover uh, rooms, keys, which are she reaches into a breast pocket and hand them out right here, and it'll also cover laundry for all of you. Which, if you got narrow in the boob, you probably need. Yeah. No. I, d I definitely. Hmm. All right. You you sure I can't get you anything to eat or drink? A glass of warm milk before bed or? Oh my gosh! Actually, yes. I am starving. What do you have? Ah, well. She immediately pulls out some menus and uh, flips them over to you. Uh, have a oh. have a look. Uh, look at uh, anything here. We've got uh, we got plenty of it. Don't you worry about uh, any shortages over here. Oh my goodness! Wow, you guys. Whew. Uh, lean leans leans over to. Uh, Valthus. <laughs> I just yeah. had a big dummy oh. moment. I was like, you know, wow. green boy. Wow. Uh, <laughs> she leans over to Valthus and is like, wow, they're really highway robbery with these prices. I know, right? What I can hear you. What's a highway? I'm whispering. How are you? How are you? I have very good ears, she says, uh, walking by to go check on another table. <laughs> 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 well, um. Anyway, I good. am going to order so much, and by so much I mean like a couple things. I don't know. Jeez, oh, it's all like really good. 
Meat of the mountain looks good. Kaleo Heck puts yeah. down enough coin for a stuffed mushroom and a leaf salad. Alright. <laughs> oh man. Leaf salad sounds good. Oh man. Catch of the day does not sound good. Uh, what well, catch of the day sounds delicious. <laughs> I don't I don't like no, I don't like that. I just am eh? interested in some salad today. I Guess I could just go for the nuts. I <laughs> you uh, go for the nuts, huh, Kaleo? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm... You a fan? What? Of, of, what? You a fan of nuts? You you big nut fan? Mm-hmm. Like nuts? Oh my god! Oh my you gosh! Like yes. Have you tried some of the ac if you tried some of the acorns back home? They are delicious. Wait, wait, wait. Kaleo. Uh, hmm? Did you say yeah. you're a big fan of nuts? Nuts, yes. All right, he's not gonna. He's not gonna take my bait. <laughs> what? What bait? What's going on? So don't worry about it. it. No, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Me personally, I would like the meat. Ah, oh, of course. Um, yeah, meat pies today. They are uh, goats. We got a lot of goat these days. Uh. Well, I'm gonna help you out with that goat. I think I'm gonna get me to the mountain and. Oh my gosh, I haven't even looked at drinks yet! Oh, jeez. <laughs> you know, I. Hmm. Just some floral tea sounds <clears throat> nice. That sounds nice. Of course, of course. Uh, Maxwell uh, puts down just enough for a. Stuffed mushroom and a salad, and just some water, and uh, I think that leaves just Valtheim to order. Yeah, um, I want a catch of the day and some and a bottle of spiced rum. Of course, coming right up. Uh, she writes all that down. Uh, takes the uh, the gold and silver for it. Kitchen's not too busy, so it should be out in a few minutes. Uh, my name is Joanna. If you need anything. Thank you, Joanna. I love her. Joanna's cute. I love her. I love Grimes her so Trzynski does the good art. Yes, mm -hmm. she does. Hypothetically speaking, it, you know what? No, I'll ask this after the after the show. Okay. Does it have to do with nuts? Shut up. <laughs> Wait, are you talking in character or out of character? I'm I'm talking in response to what you just said, which is out of character, right? Yeah, in that case, shut up. <laughs> Alright, great. <laughs> Alright. Uh, true to Joanna's word, a few minutes pass, and she comes out, easily balancing this platter of a whole bunch of food, and just sliding it over <laughs> along with drinks. Ah, there you go. Uh... Welcome to White Vane, and enjoy mm. some of this uh, delicious hospitality! Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah. You, uh, Thank you. you all start eating? Holy shit, this is good food! Oh my god! It's warping it up! This is the only real food I've eaten, I think, in my whole life! <laughs> I mean, it's much better than rations. Oh, yeah. Khalil stops. He's just completely frozen in place. While he's frozen, I walk oh, over and take yeah. some of his salad. <laughs> he, he's, he just places <laughs> a hand down on Lean's hand. Uh, uh dexterity. <laughs> <laughs> Fine, you want to do a contest? Let's do it. Sleight of hand! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me slide of hand some of his salad. What do I have to roll t against that? Slide of hand. <laughs> okay. Oh my god. Oh, oh my you. god. <laughs> Your salad is mine. <laughs> <laughs> Lean has taken the salad. In that there case, I'm just gonna assume that Kaleo hasn't noticed then, and he's just. <laughs> yeah. I live my life subsisting only on fruits and nuts. <laughs> this is. This is delicious. 
and there's a slight tear in his eye. Now the salad really is pretty good. Huh? The meal I've ever had. Then <laughs> uh, he reaches for his salad and realizes that half of it is gone. <laughs> oh no! Hey. What happened? Oh, you're hungry, aren't you? Like she's like hiding it behind the meat. <laughs> Yeah, you already ate half your salad. You didn't even know. I, I, I. Wow, was I that hungry? Yeah, wow. I mean, we've been through I, a lot, uh, so. I, I guess. I, I, guess. Uh, I guess we have all our <laughs> rations. I guess we must have given all of our. Like we did give all our rations. Hmm. I like how Maxwell's going along with it. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> Like snicker, like. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Says Maxwell, hand to his mouth. <laughs> Kaleel just goes back to the other half, <laughs> carving it down. Uh, you continue chowing down, uh, and Joanna uh, walks over. So, um, like I said, we don't get a whole lot of travelers in here. Uh, tell me, tell me, what uh, what brings you to White Bane? Traveling. I'm a bard, so, you know, I want to, like, hit all the cities. Nice, nice, nice. Good, good. Yeah, I'm just kind of traveling around, looking to see what everyone has to offer. <coughs> you know, sight, sounds, all that jazz. Well, um, if I'm going to be honest, uh, you didn't particularly come at a good time for White Vane because most of the happenings are here, which is good for me, but not so great for everyone else. So yeah. I noticed. Unfortunate. A friend of mine told me I should visit the city more often, but if this is happening, then uh, you do what you do. <laughs> right. Well, um, if you guys don't need anything, I've got a couple of other customers I'd like to tend to and see if they want uh, dessert. So uh, I'll be off. She says with a salute dessert? and dessert. Thank you. Dessert. Dessert. Uh, and as you mentioned dessert, Max was like, if I have dessert, I'll go into a food coma. And yet I must. Oh, I must. Or the dessert at. Or the dessert at. All right. Ah, well, uh, dessert changes uh, every day. Uh, chef special. I think it's bread pudding today. Oh my God. I, I need it. I need it. I need it. <laughs> Great. Uh, three sil Heck not yeah. three silver, three gold. Uh, if I was charging three silver, that would be, uh, that would be eating me out of house and home. Well, that's a lot, but I, I must. You gotta do it. All I right. must. You must. And you hand over gold for some bread pudding. The bread pudding eventually comes out and holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> It, it's, it melts in your mouth. You taste the freaking, the different textures dancing together in a swirl of flavors, making your mind go exploding. No, I'm the actually hungry. This is evil. evil. <laughs> I love bread pudding. Bread pudding is so good. <laughs> My mom makes a really good bread pudding. Nice. Mm. Can I have some? Yeah, sure. Here you go. Thanks to see if I notice the missing salad. <laughs> I think by now Lean will have eaten the missing salad. That's so I'm... fair. That's fair. It's in my tom tom. You'd have to look in there to see it. <laughs> We're not at that point of the campaign yet. Nope. <laughs> uh, yet. That's the key not. word right there. Maxwell finishes his bread pudding and is just kind of slumping backwards in his chair. Mouth agape. Okay, yeah. Here's the food coma. <laughs> Good and night, Maxwell. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. Volta just kind of like leans over. I would offer to perform, but I feel like I'm gonna look like a pregnant woman up there. <coughs> and that's not bad. But part of my show is kind of a oh, little smacks at you. <laughs> so. A little bit. I just kind of, kind of raised the the rum bottle and I'm like perform. You can do it. I don't know about this. Why not? Because I don't know if I'm gonna look like a fashionista. 
Eh, uh, you look fine. I I can't just look fine, Valpiv. You don't get it. No, no, no. You you miss you miss my point. You look fine. Okay, that's I better. I don't know what I don't know what you mean by use. But I mean, Valpiv is right, Lean. You you look gorgeous. Well, thank you, Kaleo. Well, she comes over. Maybe I will see if she would like a free performer because I'm not hearing any freaking jams. Or if I am, they're really quiet. Uh, it is quiet hours. Calls over, Joanna. Shit. Maybe Aww. tomorrow. Maybe. I am getting morning music myself. <sighs> all right. And so eventually, you all trundle upstairs, getting into some of the rooms, and collapse into bed. Ready for whatever else is lying within the town of White Vane. And that's where we're gonna cut the session. Oh! Hey. We deserve this rest. You After, really? like, only one day, one session, is like, we need this rest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Thank you all so much for tuning in to the first session of Cannibal Conspiracy. This was really fun. I am so glad we're getting back into this. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. I think there might be a stream tomorrow. I have no idea what it is, but it'll be yes, at it 7. Is. Mm -hmm. We will be running Arcade Spirits. Kristen, cool. Bro, and I. Nice. And then <coughs> on Sunday, it is a non-canon Discord murder party with the Acolyte. So who knows? Maybe there's more Cannibal Conspiracies over there. Woo! Woo! Yeah. yeah, and then uh, we're going to have some fun the following week because it's the month of spooky and the week of spooky. Uh, it's spooky. Cannibal Conspiracy 2 will return in November. Uh, bye bye, everybody. Bye, guys. Yeah. Love you. <laughs>